Space, the final frontier. This is a review show for Star Trek The Next Generation. It's continuing mission to explore interesting plot points, to seek out goofs and continuity errors, to boldly go where no other TNG review show has gone before. It's Wednesday. It's eight o'clock. It's the TNG Review Show. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's uh, it is us. We're back. It's the TNG Review Show on the Vault. Um, consigning another episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation to the Vault. Tonight, I am joined by my co-hosts, Maz and McBob. Oh. Good evening, Maz. Tavi Kinstoner. Good evening, Tavi. And the Tired Time Lord. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Time Lord. I hope you're all well this evening. And the episode we're consigning to the vault this evening is The Pegasus. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking about that uh, this evening. Um, but firstly, uh, tonight, um, Maz, you're not in your home location, are you? I am not. I am in Norway. Hooray! <laughs> but we don't actually see each other until tomorrow. So um, we're going to have a couple of days of sightseeing around Oslo. We already clambered over the uh, opera house today. And went up and down many floors of um, Munch uh, uh, paintings and exhibits. Um, you know, yeah, so we've had a good time already. We just got here this morning. Very cool. Very cool. You're so close, but so far away. Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Reaching across the divide. Um, yeah, but uh, so I imagine you're feeling quite tired after uh, all your commuting. Yeah, journey. well, we were up at like four o'clock this morning to get to the airport for five to take off at seven, and yeah. there's a time difference. So um, yeah, a bit tired. A bit tired, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you. You're... And I also have I also have um, my other half behind me, so if it accidentally pops into to view, you know 
apologies of what happened. If you see there. a shirtless ghostly Having... figure walk by in the background, yeah. well, that's what it is. <laughs> to be fair, there are worse things than a shirtless wrist to drift into a screen. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's having to. We're in a little hotel room. He's having to deal with me streaming in bless. the same room as him tonight. Aww. Never mind. While well, we're on holiday as well. How very weird. Very, very <laughs> Dedication to the weird. cause. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Tommy Hins, how's your week going? Doing very good. I'm currently suffering from plasma burn. I think I'm low on electrolytes. I keep getting a Charlie <laughs> hurt with my abs. It hurts. <laughs> Oh. So you're going to see me moving around. Uh, you, but I'm doing good. Cramping up there. Cramping up. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. It's not something else, but Medic. it's posted. You know? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get the doctor. Uh, uh, Mon Mon Monty Ban, you've had appendicitis. What does that feel like? <laughs> yeah, no, appendicitis is not fun. Oh, no, it, it is cramps. Like one part of my stomach is just like cramping and then releasing. Yeah. I got a banana, so our views might uh, increase. Uh -huh. <laughs> was it you're supposed to eat it sideways that how, that's how good girls eat it sideways <laughs> what i think that was amy farrah fowler on them oh, on them um, uh... big, big bang theory they were like i've never seen anybody eat a, a banana sideways she's like my mum told me that's how good girls eat it <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant um good evening tired time lord how's your week going it's going all right. I'm just kind of derping along. <laughs> derping along. Derping. Uh, how, how's Brilliant. things going on on your t on your channel? Is it, it's a, is it looking good this week? It is. I uh, I was really happy with some of the skits I did, and uh, I'm working on my review of Star Trek Three. Um, that's that's about what I'm I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, I decided to slow up on my release schedule for my main videos because the skits have been doing so well. So I'm mainly focusing on those. And then I I'm focusing on quality over quantity on my main videos. Nice. Nice. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Shorts do tend to perform quite well, don't they? Because yeah. they're so accessible and especially like younger folk don't like to watch anything and too long these days. I saw Short my son binging around, right? my videos and that was oh, just really? that was like oh yeah. so. <laughs> he likes my stuff. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Amazing. Um of course uh, we're still missing uh, Chief Sean. Uh he is still uh, working on his theater production which we saw some uh, some pictures of the set and stuff this week. Um hopefully he'll be back over Easter when they take their Easter break. Um, so yes, um, Sean. Sean will be back in a in a week or two. Um, and hello to everyone in live chat world, um, which at the moment looks like just Ruth and Stuplum. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where everybody else is, but uh, um, it, it could be your night, guys, for the uh, quiz points. Oh, that, that reminds <laughs> me. Have we have we got a quiz? I haven't looked on Facebook. Have we, we do. We do have a quiz. We have a quiz. Yes. Okay, we have a quiz. Since Sean's not here, it's all kind of like it's all on a wing and a prayer, isn't it? Really, but uh, <laughs> that's good. And and even though you're in Norway, Maz, have you got your goofs and trivia? I do. Wow, yes. it's. I, I did a, li a little bit earlier, like when I was sort of waiting for the the plane and stuff, and then I did another little bit for an hour or two just before the show. So. Brilliant. <laughs> I love the way as well Ty Time Lord there is in the uh, TOS like uniform and he has the TOS engineering behind him <laughs> and you guys are, you know I do try to keep it matched up I thought about doing my uh, six doctor outfit today but I said no everyone's in Trek outfit even if I have Time Lord in the name I should keep it to the Trek <laughs> keep it to the Trek right. yes no bloody A, B, C or D for you there in there <laughs> Right. Love it. So, this evening, we are discussing the Pegasus, which is episode 12 of season 7. Yes, we're just one episode off the halfway point in the final season. How scary is that? Production number 40277-264. It first aired in the United States on the 10th of January, 1994. 
So this must have been the first one back after the uh, winter break because uh, last week's one was like the, I don't know, it was like the 28th of November or something. It was like late in November. So um, 10th of January, yeah. So usually, like in this part of the season, they have a two-parter, don't they? Because they do that sort of like mini cliffhanger, like, you know. Not this time. No cliffhanger. So, uh, yes, we're back from yeah the winter break. It's the 163rd episode to be both produced and released in TNG. It was written by Ronald D. Moore. It was his 26th of 29 writing credits um, from... Uh, from Ronald, probably one of the best writers in Star Trek, to be honest. And we've talked about many times, you know, the guy behind the reboot of Battlestar Galactica and that sort of thing. And it was directed by Levar Burton, a very own Geordie. This is his second of two episodes that he directed, the other one being... Uh, second Chances. Second Chances, that's it. The uh, Thomas the Riker episode. Thomas Riker well. episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else uh, from, the, uh, from the... Just that the um, Ronald Moore said that the episode was inspired by the novel Raise the Titanic, premise of a mis mystery ship from the past that holds a secret. Um, and the only other thing is that this episode was scored by John Debney, um, who was well known at the time for also uh, doing episodes on the main theme of Sequest DSV. Um, and he's also done music for some DS9 episodes like Monegas and Progress. Right. I like the theme tune to DSV. I think it was pretty good. Mm. That was that was a good yeah. show. That had a good premise to begin with that kind of went weird. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw it. Battlestar Galactica, you said. Yeah, have you seen Battlestar uh, Galactica? Yeah. Nope. No, I've, I've heard of it. I've, I, it's on the agenda of things I should watch eventually, but I never got around to it. So this is a question with Battlestar Galactica. Do you watch like the 1970s Battlestar Galactica and then watch the, the like 2000 and noughties remake? Or do you just go straight in with the remake? I think watch, watch it, watch the original first personally. It gives you like I these. can't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. got the time. Yeah, it's actually only one season. I think it's like ten episodes or something. That's it. Really? Yeah. Considering I, I Battlestar Galactica. So, yeah, considering Battlestar Galactica is like thought of as being like a big series in like the seventies or early eighties. Uh, yeah, they just made one season of it, or I don't think it was even a full season. It got cancelled before the end of the season, so it was, that was it. But yes, the uh, the remake is also good, though. It's, it's different, but it's good. Right. I see Smilers in chat. Uh, Tavi, Smilers in chat. You're not going to sing to her? Uh, so, 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 so I, was, I was expecting it was Smiler Rainbow uh, song. Uh. You were speaking, so I was typing in the lyrics just ah. now. So I it in. She's also because trying to eat. Full of food because I'm constantly munching. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think that would be the best. <laughs> also, I, I, I tried to say hi, Smiler, in chat, but I put hi, Slimer, instead. Hi, Slimer. Yeah. <laughs> You're just getting mm. ready for the new Ghostbusters film. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's okay, hold on. Shadowcraft in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Look at that. It's in a pet. A smiling <laughs> rainbow. Yay. I can warp anywhere. Send it version. Gator's <laughs> nose. A smiling <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> Lovely. Well, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the extended cut. That uh, yeah, mm. very good. Oops, a lot right. less tone deaf than I am. <laughs> and all of us, I think. <laughs> yeah, I Definitely. am terribly tone deaf, abysmally tone deaf. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it was that bad when you posted that song on Facebook. It, was, it wasn't too bad. It's pretty good. I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm oh, trying to remember what song. Have I seen it? Anyway. Uh, it was in, it was in the face, face picture. I've just realised, of course, you can't see the picture. I need to actually share. There you go. There it is. Ah. So here we go. Line. The episode uh, starts off, and we're in the observation lounge celebrating Captain Picard Day. Yes. The captain and counsellor are judging Captain Picard, uh, Captain Picard portrait competition. Deanna tells the captain that the children look forward to this day every year. Though the captain is clearly uncomfortable about it, thinking that the children have an overinflated view of him. I think it's pretty cool. You got all these like pictures. I guess they must have got like a local like school or something, because some of them they were sourced from two local elementary schools and the children of the property master Alan Sims. Ah. Later on, they said uh, it's a sculpture of his head that wins, and Will's like, "Is it the yeah, orange one?" Orange. So, so I'm guessing it, that it's that. There's that Brilliant. that that one. There. Yeah, there you go. If you want to see the winner, yeah, that's the winner. Um, so yes, uh, Picard thinks they have an overinflated view of him, but Riker disagrees. Animating a Picard puppet and doing a Picard voice tells the captain he thinks the likeness is quite striking. Wouldn't you agree, number one? Picard is sure. Uh, so sorry, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say I love this scene i love Riker being cheeky that when i was watching this the other day that was the first thing i i, I just i i absolutely love how he's just giving him hell about it you know like you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's uh yeah he does a pretty good uh uh pretty good uh captain picard voice um picard's sure that uh there is something else that Riker should be doing right now so Riker exits to the bridge and attempts to take the Picard puppet with him until Deanna makes him put it back. Oh, he could have put it on the captain's chair. Picard then gets a priority call from Vice Admiral Blackwell, who orders him to rendezvous with the USS Crazy Horse in Sector 1607 to pick up an operative from Starfleet Intelligence. They are allowed to even exceed warp speed limitations. Ooh. She notices the banner behind him and questions him about it. Picard's like, I'm um I'm a I'm a role model, you see. The children for the children. The animal's like, hmm, I'm sure you are, and then hangs up. <laughs> and like, Picard's like left sort of standing there, like uh, that that conversation didn't go quite as well as he'd hoped. <laughs> Uh, sometime later, the Enterprise reaches the USS Crazy Horse and um, walking to the transporter room. Riker asks Picard. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I just got to um, just. Uh... <laughs> it's, it's Monty Day now. <laughs> very good, Smiler. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did you just print that out just for that joke? Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Um, yes. Um, they're walking the corridor, and uh, Riker asks Picard uh, who won the, the contest. And um, Picard tells him it was the seven year old called Paul who made the orange clay head. And Riker questions Oh, the one with lumpy skin. So, obviously, he didn't think much of it. He thinks it's quite funny. Picard informs the smirking Riker that next month he has arranged a Commander Riker day. And Riker's like, oh, great. I wish he hadn't teased him about it now. So, oh, I put the picture in the wrong place. One day I'll get it right. So the operative beams aboard and it turns out to be Admiral Eric Pressman. Will's former commanding officer from when they served on the USS Pegasus together. Pressman looks pleased to see Riker, but not the other way around. Riker doesn't necessarily seem pleased to see him. The Pegasus is the reason he is here. He tells Riker and Picard that 
she's still out there. And the Romulans have found her. Dun, 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 dun. I hope he didn't bring a bag on board, because if so, they should check it, because it might be full of knives. Yes. Lost reference. That is lost reference. No, no nobody's seen Lost. Uh -oh. Maz knows what I'm talking about. She's on mute. She, we don't know what she's saying, but she's, she's agreeing with me, I'm sure. We'll just take it as read. Yeah, sorry, I have watched Lost. I, um, I was just concentrating on chat and, you know, interacting with people there, so I wasn't actually paying full attention. No, it's all right. No, it's <laughs> all right. Never mind. Anyway, to the news that uh, the Romulans have found her. Um, Riker looked quite shocked, and that was the end of the teaser. So, it's question time. Oh, yeah. Let me get your questions ready <clears throat> for the teaser. What ship did the Big D have the rendezvous with? A, Cairo. B, Charleston. C, Crazy Horse. D, Croquette. And the bonus is all of the above ships are the one class of ship, but one, but what class? What the heck, Sean? Okay. They are one class of ship, but what one? Yeah. Ah, they are one class of ship, but what one? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, C and an F. Hi. There we go. Ah, the crocodile. Um, yes. Rocket. Yeah. I, don't know. I just don't know. Oh, I need to answer, um, don't I? Uh, yes, you got to answer. Um, while you're doing that, uh, yeah, they were originally going to have like, the teaser, the light-hearted element was going to be um, rehearsing Pygmalion, like Data Troy and Riker rehearsing, um, but they decided to, you know, they more conceived this Captain Picard day and they wanted to use, make use of Jonathan Frakes impersonation so they must have known that he could do it like maybe he does it behind the scenes or something like that um, oh, what, they as you mentioned wrote, they wrote that scene in just because of Jonathan Frakes doing Picard impressions well partly yes you know they wanted something light hearted and they wanted to make use of the impersonation so they hatched the idea yeah I wonder if that's just cool. a running trend because I met Garrett Wang once and he did a Catherine Mulgrew impression. If it if the crew members are just doing impressions of the captain characters at every convention. <laughs> Brent Spiner that is does a really thing. good one, doesn't he? Of the of the of Picard. He does a really good one. I've seen that. Also, I, I do, you guys can be thinking throughout the episode, but enter those dad jokes. <laughs> believe that, believe that, uh, they, they come for points. What did we do last week for dad joke points? Winner of the dad like, joke. It was something it was like, hefty. Oh, it was. Well, it was like 50 oh. points or something. Yeah. I don't know. Best dad who, who won it? I can't remember. Do we know who won it? Oh, yeah, probably huge. Uh, 50 points it was. Yeah. It was 50 right. points. Oh, yes, Mr. T won it, didn't he? He did. He's still spinning around my wheel. Yeah, he's saying he got 50 points. He Mr. Knows. T's still oh, spinning look. around my wheel all by himself. Look. He's been doing that all week. He's been doing that all week. <laughs> he's just been spinning around. Um, what else have I got? Oh, you mentioned uh, Terry O'Quinn was in Lost. Um uh, he was also in Alias, uh, and both of those things were J. J. created Abrams. by J.J. Abrams, who went yeah. on to do 2009 Star Trek. Yeah. Um, the production staff were so impressed with Terry O'Quinn that they, Michael Piller really wanted to use uh, his character in an episode of Deep Space Nine, but it didn't come to fruition, but yeah. Um, and the other one is that um, Jonathan Frakes and Terry O'Quinn here playing officers who served together 12 years previously as ensign and captain um and at this episode's time now they're commander at admiral admiral um however you wouldn't believe it they are both 41 years old when this episode was produced frakes is five weeks younger than o'quinn so, you um, can actually tell at this point that they like grade his hair 
you know that's not i that's, thought that in one of the that's, scenes that's, I, that's I not natural that's not natural gray mm -hmm. that's not how his hair looks in lost where it's actually gray yeah. like proper um that's like fake grade but, funny yeah um cool <laughs> Tavi, uh, Mr. Tavikin says, you spin me right round, baby, right round. Like a <laughs> record, baby, right round, round, round. round, round. round. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> I was looking yeah. at the chat like, did he not take that opportunity? They, um... <laughs> where, Ruth, where, where's nice our Wookiee? Time, Lord. We want to know where our Wookiee is. We, we miss Wookiee. Um, let us know if he's all right, Ruth. Uh, because Sean isn't here to do the Wookiee growl. Yeah. It's, <laughs> is, it, is it because Sean? Is it because uh, he's just a a, a Sean of Stan and because uh, Sean's not here, uh, Wookiee's like, I'm out. Tell me when Sean's back. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. So that's all the goofs and trips and stuff I've got. Any other comments from anyone else? No, no. It's uh, Well, we can do the quiz results then. Yes. We can. Um, do. Most people seem to have said C. I think we got C, 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 C. Um, the beard guest B. I think it was guesses. He submitted his guesses earlier, has he? Yes, he gave me a rundown um, of his list. And then for the class of ship, we've got a few different things. We've got Excelsior class, Intrepid class, um, Oberth class. Uh, and that's it. So, mm, interesting on the bonus question. So, what is it, Tabby? All right. Let's see. Um, it is C. C. Um, yes. The okay, ship cool. was the Agam, um, and the ship was Excelsior. Excelsior. Oh, Excelsior. <laughs> Time Lord gets that one right. And you're the right. only one who got that right as well. I only remembered I it. Like, so while I was watching it, I noted they used the same footage from Best of Both Worlds. There's this shot they reuse constantly throughout the series of the Excelsior next to the Enterprise. And they just use different names for the Excelsior every time they reuse the footage. And I was <laughs> like, ah, oh, that's that same shot again they've been using for five seasons. <laughs> it is the same shot and actually i didn't uh, i didn't actually listen to the question and i just thought oh there's no birth class ship in this i'll just stick a birth <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're right there is <laughs> um, but yeah but um it was actually we've seen it before i mean it's the same excelsior shot that they used since the first season but um that shot and that actual ship was in i think descent I'm pretty sure that oh. what's her name, um, Admiral yes. Necheyev. Ne 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 Necheyev, is it? Ne Necheyev, yeah. aka Necheyev at all conventions. I think she came on board via the USS Crazy Horse um, in descent with the same footage. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, so yes, uh, you, so you're on the wheel. So that's it. It's, it's it's just, just Time Lord. It's just Time Lord by himself. So uh, yeah, so he gets the ten points. Yeah, you bonus. get the ten no. points. I thought we were still putting yeah. uh, a black hole and white hole on it, or is we? that only? Oh the well, Wookie only gets to go on there when he's watching. Yeah, because we didn't put him on last week. But yeah, Tavikins can go on then. But then, if it be everybody gets ten points, then Time Lord's going to get ten points anyway, right? Oh, uh, we could we could put Tavi on as the black hole. Well, yeah, and if you want to be a zero pointer or a negative pointer, <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cruel, isn't it? Really, I'm doing this to tired. Like, for, Changing uh, the rules just Changing now. Rules. Time Lord's got yeah. ten points in the bag. Yeah, it's that's all right. good. <laughs> Go ahead. There's the. Oh, you got to do it several times. Don't make it so painful. Don't make it a pokeball. No. <laughs> no. Give us some suspense. There you go. Right, let's spin the wheel. That was like right on the line. 
Oh, I honestly That's think hard. we should give that to him anyway. Because, I mean, look at that. I can't even see the pixel that it's on. Very harsh. That is awesome. <laughs> That's, That's hilarious. <laughs> That's so mean. I can't believe that. I've never seen that before. I mean, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who could, have, who could have predicted that? I feel bad now. <laughs> I don't feel bad. It was fun. Uh, right. That was epic. So in we're in the observation lounge now for the beginning of Act 1, uh, where Admiral Preston, uh, Pressman and Riker give Picard and Geordi a briefing of what happened on the Pegasus. It was 12 years ago. They reported a warp core breach. Riker, Pressman and seven others survived, but the ship was never recovered and declared destroyed by Starfleet. All that changed three days ago when a spy in Romulan High Command reported finding debris from the Pegasus in the Devlin system. Though she's old now, she was a prototype, and there's a lot of tech that the Romulans would like to get their hands on. Picard agrees and orders to set course for the Devlin system. We then get a nice shot. I think it's been used in a couple of other episodes of the Enterprise approaching um, the asteroid belt that is the Devlin system. Talk about nice shots. Here's another sh nice shot of another D. The Data D. Yes. Finally. Yep. The reason why I'm actually here. <laughs> it's been a while, but there you go. Uh, the crew wonder if there are Romulans out there somewhere. And indeed, as soon as they wonder that, one D cloaks right in front of them. Wolf reports that the Romulans are powering their weapons and hailing them. I thought it was quite funny at this point. I noticed, like, who who was directing this again? Lamar Burton. Yeah. And when when they give the briefing in the observation <laughs> lounge to Picard, who was sat with Picard? Oh, it's Levi Burton. It's like, what's he doing in that scene? <laughs> and here, when Wolf is George like operating like putting himself in everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> It's like <laughs> Wolf's just doing his thing at tactical, and who's there? There's got to be some perks, right? <laughs> Leave like, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm getting my acting, my acting pay, and I'm directing. <laughs> Usually, when a crew member directs the episode, they're hardly in it because they're like behind the camera. But Levar just took this as his final directing opportunity at TNG. He's just sticking himself in all the scenes, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> so yes. The Romulans are hailing them. So they talk to Commander Cyril, who pleasantly inquires as to what they are doing in this system. It turns out that both the Romulans and the Enterprise are cataloging gaseous anomalies. Picard offers to share their data, but the Commander is sure that their individual objectives are more than likely not compatible. They say their pleasant goodbyes, and both ships move off, continuing to scan the area with tachyon scans. Later in Ten Forward, Riker and Pressman catch up over a drink. Pressman inquires onto how long Riker's had the beard. Riker tells him that he got tired of everyone telling him how young he looked. Pressman comments how Lieutenant Boy. I was going to say Lieutenant Boiler, L Lieutenant Boylan uh, <laughs> used to call him Ensign Babyface. Apparently, Riker was always so serious on the Pegasus. Their conversation turns to the Pegasus and the chances of finding it and the experiment, whatever that might be. Riker seems regret regretful about how they went about their mission back then, but Pressman is sure that they can make it right by trying the experiment again. He has the backing of many admirals, and Riker himself has orders from Admiral Rayner, Chief of Starfleet Security, encoded in the ship's computer. Riker's shocked by all this, but Pressman tells him not to worry, it's all going to work out. Just don't tell anyone about it, not even your captain. There will be no one to stop us this time. And that is the end of Act One. Dun, dun, dun. 
It's question time. It's question time. All righty, <laughs> let's see what we got. Which of these ships will Will Riker not, or did Will Riker not serve on? A, Titan B, Hood. C, Gandhi. D, Potemkin. And the bonus is, what nickname, nickname did Riker have on the Pegasus? See, yeah. I ended that. Uh. I ended that act. Um, he said, "Like you know, there'll be nobody around to stop us." And I thought, I'll put in the, "There'll be no one to stop us this time." See, where's that from? Who says it? It's, it's Vader from A New Hope, isn't it? It's Vader. Oh. From New it's a little, it's a little <laughs> tiny Star Wars reference for the bingo there. If we didn't have a Star Wars thing, it's a little, little tiny. Uh, I was I was on the fence with the Star Wars reference. I think I put it in though for you did. We were yeah. talking about Sean Sean making the Wookie noises and everything. Ah, yeah, that's, that's good. Ah, it's, it's yeah. Very so it's very much so put in now. Cool is. And and Wookie, Wookie's just busy at the moment, so he's fine. Oh, Bruce he's says, all right then. Fine. He's all right. <laughs> That's good. He's missing That's his good. Sean, isn't he? He's missing his Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, so what do we have for trips and goofs and stuff? Um, so when they are, oh yeah. So LaForge was um, saying in the briefing room, what would the Romulans want with a twelve-year-old starship? But of course, it was destroyed 12 years prior. But the person who wrote this goof is saying, oh, it fails to take into account how long it was in service, etc. But they did say it was a prototype, which implies it was kind of new, right? So mm. I think the 12 years thing, I think that's an incorrect goof, actually. Um, uh, but then it's also pointed out that it's an birth class ship. Uh, so many of the systems were designed nearly a century before then. Um, so, you know, it might have not been top of the range, but, you know guessing the Romulans knew there was something super secret on board. Um, when he calls it a prototype, that would normally mean that they have an X in the registry. Is that right? Yeah. And it does not. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Something's going, something, something happened. Some things your... went really weird with your sound then. It yeah, was like what, electronic what speaking then? noises. <laughs> Still not good. No. <laughs> I'd, uh, Maybe leave, leave and rejoin. Twiddle, twiddle your uh, uh, cables or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that um, was. But yeah, we haven't seen the registry yet. You won't see it till a bit later, but there should be an X in it, which there's not. No. Um, uh, oh, and we met, we met, um, what's he called? Cyril, right? The Romulan? How's that? Yeah. Better? Yeah, that's better? Yes, that's much yeah, better. Okay. What were you going to say? I don't know what happened. Um, what was I about to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> but that, um... that electronic sound thing has happened to Sean a couple of times in the past, hasn't it? I don't know what causes it, but it has happened once or twice with, with Sean. Yeah. So, yeah, never mind. At least leaving and coming back sorted it, so let's keep our fingers Switch crossed. it off and switch it back on again. It's always the way, yeah. isn't it? Sorry, I was talking I, about the prototypes having an X in oh, the um, registry. An yes. X. So the yeah. um, I think that the prototype in this case isn't the ship. If it was the ship, it's it would the have device. the X. But yeah, it's yeah. the device, the cloaking device inside the ship mm. that they're um, that that's the prototype. Mm. I guess that makes more sense then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so Michael Mack is the first African American actor to play a Romulan. Apparently, they yeah. were initially going to sort of make his skin the same sort of color as other Romulans, but obviously they axed that idea, which was good um, and probably, you know, paved the way for, you know, other sort of uh, um, differently skin toned aliens it played in Star Trek, which is great. Um, I actually really like that scene, the way they're like, they, you know, and it's like sort of typical. <laughs> they Romulans. have this like, little rap so, so going pleasant, on, don't they? You know, you know, and it's like all these like undertones of, you know. <laughs> I know that you know that I know that you know, <laughs> you know that you're yeah. looking for the Pegasus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but just going through the motions, keeping yes. it civil. <laughs> Our scientific Brilliant. objectives are not compatible. 
Ja. Dear. Um, at the conclusion of the first encounter with them, uh, Worf says, oh, they've, resu they've resumed their tachyon scans of the asteroids. It's like mm. if they'd just decloaked in front of them without any warning, how the hell did he know what was going on before then? Um, uh, and then the final bit is with Will Riker and the Admiral talking in Tem Forward. They ask Riker how long he's had a beard. How long did he say? Four years. How long has it really been? Uh, six yeah, closer to six. Yeah, because I thought he got it in second season, right? Yeah, beginning of second season. Yeah, yeah. towards the beginning, yeah. So, so it's, it's been, been at least yeah, five, and five and a half. Five and a half to six years, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all I have for that act. Anybody else have anything? I, I do. I like the... I didn't know if they, they did it intentionally on the script that I wrote it in chat because they asked what the Romulans want with a, a starship or whatever, Federation starship. And immediately I go, but what is God with a starship? <laughs> 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 do they do that on purpose? But I don't know. That was one of those things where those things trigger yeah. side thoughts or lyrics to songs. But yeah. It's, it's my favorite line from TOS. I say for, yeah. for, for, for one of the worst Star Trek movies, it's got so many quotable lines in it. Which is, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Can we just uh, say, like, there's just some mad respect for this la lady's hairstyle. And then, yeah, uh, it's and cool. Then, <laughs> that's so, called the Marge Simpson. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's very vintage hairstyle she's trying to bring back. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a oh, crazy wow. look, isn't it? It's, uh, mm. it's out there. It's, I think she gets like maybe she's intimidated it, by eh? Guinan's hats. So uh, she's <laughs> there's something with her hair. Like, I can do something cool too. Yeah. <laughs> you can't one up Guinan though. That's no. just not gonna no. happen. <laughs> no. I wonder what he's drinking. Looks like spiced rum to me, but then I have spiced rum on the brain. I brought I brought all these I brought all these through security. Like apparently, you can bring alcohol through security as long as they're not in more than hundred mil containers. Uh, We've got like seven of these things. Oh <laughs> that reminds me. I've been I've been watching um, this reaction channel called Target Audience that are watching TNG at the moment, and um, yeah, one of the guys in Target Audience is always drinking a whiskey liqueur. It's called fire like fire something i think it's, a, mm. it's an american or canadian it's a cinnamon whiskey liqueur yeah fire. that's the stuff that ludicrous had that time when he got very very drunk and yeah. then he, he ended up doing this doing the worm we call it where he was laying on the floor and he oh, was trying so to get yeah. out of the room and he would just lift his bum up and then like sort of he was doing this to try and leave the room because he couldn't actually stand up. <laughs> yeah. So when I was in the Marine Corps, we used to have caterpillar races where we would get into our sleeping bags <laughs> and we would inchworm across the floor to see who would get there first. It, it was just ridiculous stuff like that. We would Maybe do that. Chris we... did in the Marines. Maybe that's why that was his escape route when he that was, was like, that was um, a G's you know, house, really wasn't it? <laughs> that was a G's low house. Crawl, low, that. Just low yeah, crawl it was out. a G's house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was at G Star's house. They're Fireball. playing a game where he he tried to play this it? game where he said, "If this little Lego man, if you find this little Lego man in your drink, you've got to down your drink." So then, um, uh, G Star's partner pulled him apart and put him in the bottle of Fireball whiskey. Yeah, uh, that's so it. Then, Fireball. Yeah. Some then whiskey. Ludacris tried to drink the whole bottle, which didn't go well. No. <laughs> But as he keeps drinking it, I think I, I thought maybe I'll drink that. I might get some and uh, try it on the TNG <laughs> review because they do it the target audience. So, uh, mm. Yeah, I might see yeah. if I can get that at some point. Definitely. That reminds me, I've got a bottle of wine in the fridge and I didn't actually. Um, I've got to get it out. <laughs> so I haven't got it. Well, I'm not it. drinking either. I need a snabby. So we've got a bit of a dry, dry drinking evening going. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Smiler Rainbow in live chat's already said she's on it. <laughs> she's, on it. She's, she's on it. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I could tuck into one of these little bad boys, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave them, I think, hmm. for today. So what's the answer to uh, the second question there, Tammy? 
answer to the second question is a C. Ooh. Thomas Riker served on the Gandhi, but not Will Riker. Yeah. Ah. I knew Titan was a, a throwaway, like because that's in his future and not. Yeah. That's he commands the Titan. Um, yeah, it's uh, and the bonus is instant baby face. Instant yeah. baby face. See him baby face. See him baby face. Gandhi and baby face. See him baby face. See him baby face. So everybody got it right. Got both right. Yeah. So that's five people for the spinny wheel this time. Except for the beard, he didn't do. Did he do? Uh, he said, beard did get the got got the Gandhi right. Yes, beard got it right with his guesses. Nice. But he did not. Very I don't good. think he did. He do trivia. Um, I, mean, I don't do think the bonus. I think it's just the main questions, not the bonus questions, because they're not yeah. a multiple choice, right? So you can't really submit that in advance uh, unless oof. you just say random words. <laughs> uh, Is that it? Is that everyone? Stupid. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, not the beard. That would be me. Oh, not, 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 not. Yeah, he, he got the main question right, but not the um, bonus. Ah, right. So unless he, yeah. And Tavi's our black hole of points deductions. Yes. Let's spin that wheel. And I've got my, uh, I've got my like goblet today. I um, haven't had the goblet out in quite a while. Oh yeah, I haven't used mine in a while either. And it is Monty Bam with the bonus points. Yeah, it's me. Well it's done. Well when I get done. It. It's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, right. Okay. We're happy for you. You're all happy for me. Yeah. <laughs> Act two. Um, Here we go. In fact, I'm really happy for you because you're currently in the lead. Oh, with 70 wow. points. Wow. Guys, get those dad jokes in if you <laughs> wish to surplus the That's monster. right. We haven't seen it. Has there been any dad jokes in the live chat yet? Yeah. Let Time Lords put a couple in. I put oh. a couple in. Has any made? Uh, is any made? Tabby I, I like Mr. T's again. <laughs> oh dear, they are good. I like how you keep them Star Trekky, Time Lord. I appreciate that. You're keeping Thank it on you. theme. <laughs> I took note of this. Uh, you know, the Enterprise flying through the um, Devlin system, and I couldn't help but notice. Like they copied and pasted oh, those yeah. two rocks are exactly the same. <laughs> so why would, why would they do that? All the others look different. I couldn't see any other like mm. obvious duplicates. But, mm. but those two. Right? It's like at the last and minute. The two they thought obvious this one. ones, like yeah. right in the middle as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that point. You, you think about that, is yeah. that like how it was on the original, or did they remaster it with a whole bunch of copy paste? PowerPoint asteroids. <laughs> I think it's the original. I think it's probably like that on the original. But who knows? Okay, so Picard tells Pressman the story of why he picked Riker as his first officer. You know, the whole story uh, that he um, wouldn't allow his captain to go down to another way mission and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, Admiral thinks that that reasoning sounds stupid. That Picard looked for someone with a history of insubordination. He thinks a good officer is one that trusts their captain's judgment and follows orders to the letter, or lives may be lost. He does then apologize as this mission has dug up some old ghosts in him. Picard questions him on the loss of the ship, as the official record contains little detail, but the Admiral refuses to talk about it, except to say that back then, when he needed an officer who would trust him to his judgment and follow orders, Will was that officer. In sick bay, Riker enters as he's busted a rib in a bat left practice with Worf. He's angry he got distracted. If he was using real bat lefts, he could have been killed. See, so he, um, he's... He's doing a real top-notch job there of sucking his, sucking it all in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's how it was at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> Suck it in, Will. Sucking it in. On the bridge, Data's giving updates on their scanning progress. When Geordie announces they have struck pay dirt. He has detected a subspace signal in asteroid 601 that could be a warp core. Riker calls Picard to the bridge. Again, like, I see it's uh, Data was the one scanning, like, at the front, but it's Geordie that, that finds it. It's like, well done, Geordie. wonder why Geordie got that part. Mm -hmm. They put the asteroid on view screen. And it's a big one. It's a big asteroid. Daya reports that the warp core signature is coming from deep within the asteroid, as it has some deep chasms deep enough for a starship to enter. Foreshadowing. The Romulans start heading their way as they look as they look suspicious scanning this asteroid. Riker wants to destroy the asteroid now to stop the Pegasus getting into Romulan hands, but Admiral Preston Pressman won't entertain that idea. Picard asks Data if, if they cover the asteroid in Verteron particles, would that prevent the Romulans detecting it? But Data points out that Verteron particles are artificial, so that would still look suspicious. Then Geordi comes to the rescue, suggesting flooding it with ionizing radiation, as the system's full of it already and it's natural, and Picard, Picard orders to make it so. Once done, the Enterprise casually moves away, scanning other asteroids as it goes. And that's the end of Act 2. Ooh, that was quick. That was quick. It's a quickie quick one. Yeah. But it does mean we have another question time. There it does. I'm going to let me put my chief in. It's a good shot. There's some good shots of the Enterprise and the ships flying around asteroids and things in this episode. It is nice. I get that question on. Which... Look how tiny the Romulan ship looks. Sorry. Oh. It's just far <laughs> away. <laughs> okay, uh, for our, for Act Two, which of these best describes a Pegasus, a horse sculpture made of wood, a horse with a horn, half man, half horse? D. A horse with wings. And the bonus, what V did they not use to mask the Pegasus as it was artificial in nature? What V? Does that make what, sense to everybody? Yes. What V? What V, yeah. Okay. Type of particles that uh, Picard okay. wanted to use to mask the signature in the. Yeah. Be cool, be cool. If anybody Anything was just listening the, to me. Mr. Time Lord? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I just, you know, I I know that we have like a patter of um, Monty does the thing, Tavi does the questions, I do the trips and goofs. <laughs> I just want to make sure I keep looping you in in case you want to oh. interject. So I just wondered if you had any I'm comments. I'm just happy to be here and commenting oh. on when I can. <laughs> that's fine then, that's fine. I, have I, you got I, a moopsie there in the that. background? Is that a moopsie? You better look out, there's a moopsie uh, behind you. I tell you what, no. I was just loving that idea that Moopsie is great at battles, super cute, and can only say its own name. It must be a Pokemon. Yep. I love that. I, 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 I want to write the Pokemon people and tell them to, like, you know, feature Moopsie as a special guest. I was going to keep making him bigger in the background until somebody noticed. <laughs> Oh. Like he's getting closer. <laughs> oh, he's creeping up behind you. Ah, oh, so cutely terrifying. <laughs> Brilliant. Oopsie. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Right. Where's me goofs and trips and things? Um, okay. So, oh, I don't have many this time. Um, uh, Captain DeSoto is mentioned. Uh, and we were briefly introduced to Captain DeSoto and the US hood when the ship rendezvoused with the Enterprise in Tin Man, mm. 1990, a few years ago now. Um, and this is an interesting one. So when you were saying that Riker was sort of sucking it in a bit, so here's here's a theory. Um, but Riker's never really been quite so B 
beat up before after sparring with Worf. I wonder whether it's, you know, a bit of rivalries come in now that Worf's got uh, designs on Deanna. Perhaps he's asserting his manhood, proving that right. he's, you know, proving that he's worthy or whatever. Um, but then again, if he's going to be asking right for Riker's permission at some point, you wouldn't really want to be beating the guy up too much, right? <laughs> Or, I mean, if you get rid of them, then you don't have to ask for permission. You that's know, true, yeah. That's true. Then in training. <laughs> it is, it, I thought it was slightly weird that it was kind of a scene in the middle of the thing that just just was. He broke yeah. him in. <laughs> like yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking in the background, is he trying to get out of malingering so he just doesn't want to have to deal with this entire thing? They're like, sorry, sorry sir. Can't help uh been uh been uh taken off duty i'm on convalescence wharf took me in the ribs and uh you know i just i can't help with the pegasus situation yeah. Yeah. i have to be relieved of duty for at least until he leaves it's <laughs> duplum says right here to bev when is my dental appointment when is my I don't get that. Hurt? You're going to have to explain that, Stupid. When is my dental appointment? Tooth hurting. Oh, oh it's a, a tooth joke. hurting. Oh, God. Uh, it's a touch. <laughs> you got me. You got me. <laughs> we waited until we were reading it to him. Oh, dear me. Uh, he's told that joke like so many times over so many years. I can't believe I fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it was saw what I said, but when they were meeting, when Picard and the Admiral are meeting, I think I was saying, it's the shiny forehead high rank club, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, Picard's the same though, isn't it? You know, like totally bald in his 40s, looked older than he was. Um, and uh, yeah, O'Quinn, o o o o Quinn? Uh, Terry O'Quinn is, is the same sort of thing. You look at his face, like he's got no lines, he looks quite youthful, but the hairstyle does it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I know the I know the feeling. Uh, yeah. I've looked in my forties my whole life, and eventually I <laughs> I got there. You know, I kind of finally look the man I'm supposed to be. But the nice thing is, well, once you get to your fifties, you'll suddenly be looking younger than you are, right? <laughs> well, that's a theory. It would be good theory. In theory. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've been completely bald, and I've been, I've now I've got a completely furry face, and I'm going cousin it. And I gotta say, I look better with hair than I did without. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. hard because I think like once you've got facial hair, it's difficult to go back because all mm. of a sudden, like your face looks bald. It's like weird because mm. you get so used to it. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, I, I say in that though, my other half definitely looks bad with, well, he doesn't look bad with facial hair, but in his twenties, like he, he grew like a mustache and things and shaved it and it made him look like he was about 50 and he's normally really baby faced, but I'll get him to dig out some of the pictures and show you Tavi, cause you wouldn't believe how different he looks with different <laughs> hairstyles and facial hair. It's like insane. They should have put him in the, in the, um, you know, like special forces or something. Cause he'd have been great undercover. You wouldn't recognize him from one day to the next. <laughs> And he's got the complexion and look that just fits in with any uh, country he goes to, doesn't he? Yeah, we go to Mexico, they think he's Mexican. We go to India, they think he's Indian. He's got like a generic brownness that could be could, from could anywhere. Be anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Middle East fits right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He even speaks a little bit of Arabic, but not very well. <laughs> uh, all, all I know is... Show Karambi, Seth, and uh, <laughs> I speak uh, so I je parle français, Anna Hache, Herbe, Sprechens of Deutsch, Abla, and Piquiton, Espanol, and Nuchling on Hall. Brilliant. JH. Right. Have you got answers to the questions? I, I just asked, just she shoved something into her gob again. Look. I thought you were talking to Mazza. Like, I was like, wait, are you talking to me? Oh, oh, I, I can tell you that everybody has said he and Verteron particles. Just interrupting at dinner time. So, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. he and Verteron particles, otherwise everybody's wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm right? going to have to say, um, I'm covered in D. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the bonus is Verteron particles. Verteron. Yay. So everybody got I, it. I deserve an oh my for that one. Oh, oh hang on. My. 
Oh my! There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. So it's uh, same thing on the um, wheel. I don't need to change anything, do I? Yeah, correct. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Spinning the wheel. It's Deepam. Oh, nice. Well, it's Deepam. Yay! That means Stu Plum has caught you now. Oh. You're both on 100. Damn you, Stu Plum! <laughs> <laughs> you, <clears throat> you better get a dad joke in there, Monty. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine Mr. Beard without a beard? He shaved his beard off yeah. some years ago. He's the same day he flew to Iceland. He didn't tell anyone. Well, you have wow. a very. Oh, yeah, and his friend of 15 years didn't recognize him. Mm. You have a very similar story to that earlier this year, don't you, Monty Ben? Well, it was about a year so we ago, wasn't to... it? But, yeah, we, we went oh, yeah, to, yeah. Sorry, yeah, it was um, a year ago. About a year ago, we went to G's, uh, we were on G's stag do, and we all dressed up as G, and I decided for it I'd shave my beard off. And Because uh, most of us, like, I had to put a little goatee beard on to look like G, but Mark decided to do it a little bit, or Monty Bun decided to do it a little bit differently and look like G looked when he was like 15 years old. Shave the beard <laughs> off. And so uh, we phoned my mum to let her know we were all right on this stag weekend. And my dad talked to her, you know, how you doing? You, you know. then on Maz, video chat. Maz talked to her. And I was yeah. like, hello. And, and then, then I Monty Bun says, hello. And I said, hello. hello. And he said, fine, yeah, fine. I handed it back to uh, Maz, and uh, she was like, "So where's Mark?" <laughs> and and who was that man? And I'm like, "That was." And she's like, "No." I'm like, "Yes, what? Well, you don't recognise your own son?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't recognise me. She was like, "And who's that man I just talked to?" <laughs> that was Mark. Uh, oh dear. Funny. It was awful, though. To be fair, I'm never doing that again. As long as Myla I can wait for you to throw it back. Oh, no, nobody liked it. I didn't like it. Okay, so it made you look a lot younger. It does, but that's but not, not what quite it's so good looking. <laughs> no, that's right. I'm younger but ugly. <laughs> that's, that's great. I did not say that. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Guys. I'm also not vehemently denying it. <laughs> no. But think about me. I, I have to look like that all the time because I can't even grow a beard. So, you know. <laughs> okay, X3. And look, we got data in the shot. That's, uh, it's a rarity on this uh, in this episode. Uh, data's given a running, running commentary of what the Romulans are scanning in the asteroid field. But eventually the Romulans move away. So Picard orders the Enterprise to continue its search grid, but to return to the asteroid at... 800 hours he then turns in for the night and offers pressman dinner who declines pressman wants to see will in the ready room so they head off to the ready room pressman is angry at Riker for suggesting to she destroys the pegasus he wants to retrieve it at all costs he tries to bring Riker back on side though by telling him he likes how he's changed Riker, that is. He states his opinion and stands by it, but he hopes that he hasn't lost a sense of duty and loyalty, as those things say more about a man than the rank on his uniform. He tells Riker he knows he is a good man and he will be able to count on him when the time comes. Riker then gets someone to Picard's quarters to deliver a report, but that wasn't the real reason he's been summoned. Khan's been doing some research himself and has found evidence that a mutiny took place on the Pegasus just before the incident. Picard has used up a lot of his favours in Starfleet to get his hands on this information. Riker tells him that during an engine tr trial, something went terribly wrong and there was an explosion in main engineering, causing many casualties. And amidst this crisis, the first officer, chief engineer, and most of the bridge guru mutinied. Mm. A few loyal to the captain had, run, had a running firefight to the escape pods and they jettisoned. And five minutes after they escaped, there was a massive explosion. 
Picard points out that in the report, it details survivors are hiding something and recommends follow-up. But that never happened. The whole thing was buried. Picard wants to know why, and he gets quite angry at Will uh, when Will suggests he take it up with the Admiral. I'm not asking the Admiral, damn it! But Will says he's under orders from the Admiral not to discuss it. Picard ends the discussion by deciding that he has no choice but to trust his first officer, but if it turns out that trust is unfounded, he will be reevaluating the command structure of this ship. I thought that was like, and then uh, I haven't got a picture of it, but when he says that, <laughs> Will, he's like, Will looks like proper shocked. He's like, <gasps> <laughs> Does he do his Jonathan Frakes great acting thing? <laughs> yeah. He was like, I'm doing shocked acting. <gasps> but, <laughs> yeah. Audible gasp. Yeah. <gasps> and then leaves. Still seeking answers, Picard tries Admiral Blackwell, but she just reiterates that any request to deviate from the mission is denied. Head of Starfleet Intelligence is watching this one, so they best just go along with it. On the bridge, they discuss what to do now. It's either that or uh, the the command crew are just taking turns. Um, I'm not quite sure what he's actually doing. Oh my doing. goodness! <laughs> What's actually going on there? Monty Van. <laughs> That's, That's a little awkward. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The Admiral's there like, it's my turn now. Well, <laughs> while you're down there. <laughs> Poor Data, run! <laughs> He's got such an innocent face. <laughs> Dear me. Innocent uh, is the word we're going with. <laughs> <laughs> I need a... Oh my. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm actually traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> because it looks exactly like what you're saying. <laughs> like, I didn't even realize. I just pulled up the picture. From I the wouldn't scene have thought of it like... if you hadn't have said it, but now I'm not going to be able to unthink it anytime I see this scene. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, dear. That's like our third or fourth oh my already. Like, what are we doing this episode? <laughs> I don't know. I need a. Come to the TNG oh, review. Stay for and, the oh my's. And no alcohol. No alcohol. <laughs> no, no. Terrible. Anyway. Um, so, yes, they're discussing on what to do now. They don't want to beam through that much solid rock, because apparently that's a bad thing. Who knew? I mean, they, build, they, they beam down to, the, like, inside the crust of a planet in, like, a couple of episodes ago. So, But mm -hmm. anyway... Uh, data points out that there's uh, too much gravimetric fluctuations uh, to send a shuttle uh, into one of the caves. So Pressman is like, right, there's no choice then. We'll have to take the Enterprise in. Picard tries to object, but the Admiral makes it an order. Picard orders Data to note his objection in the ship's log, which Data duly does. Picard orders Ensign Gates to take the Enterprise in on manoeuvring thrusters only. And we get a good shot at the end of this act of the Enterprise going in. And that is the end of this act. So it's c -c -c question time. I'm trying to eat here. I know uh, this stream is just completely interrupting your, uh, your feasting, isn't it, Trini? Every every time I put, oh good, I'm gonna stop saying. Um, especially Putting things in your mouth. Shut up. The thing is, though, Tammy, I don't think you've stopped eating yet. So um, you know, it's, it's... <laughs> this has been new. Oh my god. Okay. Let me get this question ready. Three. What was the name of the ensign Picard gave the order to enter the asteroid? A, Jonathan, B, Brent, C, LeVar, D, Gates. And the bonus, who is in charge of the bridge while Riker and Pressman are in the ready room? 
I'm doing well. If there's any interference on the line or anything, it's because somebody's snoring behind me. <laughs> oh, is, is, he, is he asleep? Is he snoring now? Is he gone sleepy, boys? I think so. Aww. It's like 11 I won't, there, I won't right? be too loud. What yes. time is it for you guys? Uh, it's, it'll be 10 past 10 for them, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, it's not exactly dinner time, Tammy. <laughs> no, you eat. You eat if you want to eat. Um, okay, so where are we? Act three. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't agree yeah, with that so comment scary. anyway. Um, oh, yeah, so Moore has obviously written another um, insane admiral. Yeah, well, you <laughs> like to do this, that. Uh, this whole mad admiral stories in the Star Trek canon. Mm. Um, but he was like, oh, I'm proud to say. <laughs> It's they must put idea. something in the water at uh, Federation headquarters. <laughs> um, and uh, as we just mentioned about Ensign Gates, I mean, we've we've talked about Ensign Gates a lot because she appears as an extra all the time and, um, and it always has her name listed in IMDb. But I hadn't realized that this is like the first time she gets a name. Oh, sorry. I've just told you that. Oh, everybody answered already. Um, it's the first we time she gets, it. A, gets a name. It. Yeah, it's the first time she gets a name. And apparently the line was originally written for Data. Um, but everybody said, well, that's actually, you know, that should be more of a helm thing and not an ops officer. So, um, yeah, so that was actually just a minor change, which gave her her first speaking line, which is why they then gave her her name, I guess. So, um, yeah, and Gates, you know, uh, Ensign Gates is a possible reference to Gates McFadden. I don't know if anybody's explicitly said so, but um, it makes sense. And she's been in it for so long as well. It's quite sweet, really, yeah. that in the final season they like gave her a name yeah. and a line because she'd been in it for so long. For so long. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing was, um, so Riker said that 12 years ago he was seven months out of the Academy. Mm. And he when he joined the Enterprise, which was, what, over six years ago at this point, um, he was already a commander. So that mm. means he went from ensign to commander in six years, um, which is an extraordinarily fast progression by Starfleet standards. Mm. He is, he is the, the best pilot in the fleet, though. So, you know, he was, he was a high flyer. I must, I must interrupt our, our program for a late dad joke entry that the beard sent me. <laughs> on an app and it is what is Bruce Lee's favorite drink <laughs> very good very good and the answers to the question Tav and the answers yes, got lots of these and datas mm-hmm mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Three. It is um, D, and the bonus is Data. Data. You are boy. So double D. <laughs> are, are you being uh, attacked by uh, Jeffrey Coombs? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> yep. I, 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 was going, I didn't know whether to do Yoon or. Gowron any of the other vari varieties of Jeffrey Combs. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to use a stock photo of Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> Why not? I'm just adding more characters in over and time. I've got another one that's already loaded up ready to change out. Right, well, we'll see who that is. We'll see who's uh, who's popping up next. So is Gowron <laughs> attacking you or is he attacking Moopsy? Because I was like, watch he out, is. Moopsy. Look out, Moopsy. you got Gowron behind <laughs> I you. I don't know. I just started adding characters in. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Brilliant. Um, oh, so who's on the wheel? Is it everyone again? It is, yeah. I'm going to spin the wheel. Doo -doo. 
Maybe we've complained too much to Sean for making really hard questions because it seems to be suspiciously easier this week. <gasps> we oh, that means a point. Lose 10 points. We all lose 10 oh, points. Boo. It's the Tabby Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Because as it's all of us, though, it doesn't make so much difference, It doesn't, doesn't make right? so much difference, but, you know, it was good for the, for the site, like the beard, uh, you know. Oh, well, also, the, the, oh, yes, that's true. And he actually got, he pre-guessed B for that one. So yeah. um, he did really well out of that round. He did well. He did the best. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even here. And he did better than all of us. <laughs> it's amazing. Brilliant. Okay, so we're on to yeah, we're on to Act Four. I check quarter past nine. That's it's motoring along. I used to love this shot of the Enterprise going through the uh, the fissure, the uh, cavern. Though I did think, looking at it today, that uh, it does look like the uh, Enterprise has like two headlights. You know, like it's a car because <laughs> it's kind of like oh uh, yeah. It's actually got three. You can't see the third one's down here somewhere, but there's actually three. But, um, yeah. So the Enterprise is two kilometres beneath the surface, and they're starting to encounter a graphometric shifts. Picard quietly informs the Admiral that if the passage narrows to less than 500 metres, he will abort the mission. Consequences be damned. But then Worf picks up the signal of the Pegasus ahead. However, whilst intact, 60% of the ship is inside solid rock. There you go. NCC 53847. So in indeed, it's, you know, it's not a prototype ship with an NX uh, serial number. Uh, not even data can work out how that happened. The yeah, Admiral is like, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just, <laughs> there's no point in thinking about that right now. Let's get on with the salvage operation. And so they get to work to restore uh, life support to engineering section. And the Admiral insists that just he and Riker beam down. Very suspicious. They beam down and find the dead crew still dead. But they've been preserved because the ship has been opened to a vacuum. Riker laments how many more of their dead crewmates are buried back there in the rock. The Admiral finds what he's looking for, still intact. Riker doesn't share the Admiral's enthusiasm and hoped that it was buried back there in the rock. They have a discussion where Riker points out that nothing good was come from this experiment, pointing at all the dead bodies that surround them. But the Admiral thinks that this was not their fault. Oh, he thinks this was their fault, the dead crew's fault, not his. Riker doesn't buy that, telling the Admiral that they killed them by running off. If they hadn't, maybe they'd still be alive. If he had his time over, he would be grabbing a phaser and pointing it at the Admiral instead of at them. Riker says he wasn't a hero. He was just an ensign following orders. The crew were heroes for standing up to the captain. That was going to break a 60-year treaty with the Romulans. The Admiral tells him he will follow orders and not talk to anyone about this or he will break him and his career. The ship is then rocked by a seemingly an explosion or something. So they retrieve the device and beam back out to the Enterprise. It turns out that the Romulans have sealed the entrance to the cave with their disruptors, sealing the Enterprise in forever. Dun, 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 dun. And the, uh, the last shot is them going, oh, fuck. And that was the end of Act 4. Question time. Mm -hmm. So, Tabby, are you ready for reading out questions? 
I am. I'm, I'm just popping in and uh, getting that into uh, <laughs> into chat. How many pips does Admiral Pressman have? A one, B two, um, C three. I thought I'd just take him off the uh, picture there because uh, yeah, a bit of views. Mm -hmm. I take that off. And the bonus: which part of engineering is embedded in the rock, port, or starboard? Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure about the pips. Like, I don't know. Uh, what I think it is, is, I don't know how to describe it. I'll go with. Pretty sure it was three, but I'm not a hundred percent. I'm going with three. Well, I think it's like two bars of three pips, but I don't know what that counts as. Well, but... that uh, that would be three. It would be three, and then th this would just be reflecting. It'd be mirrored because on the admirals, if you notice their uniforms, they all have them uh, mirrored, whereas everyone else just has it on the one side. Oh. I, I love rank structure. Well, they don't have six because you think they'd have to have more than four, right? Because of captain's four. I don't know. Well, the bar, the uh, the the circle, the the square around it makes it an admiral. So each pip inside of the square uh, oh, is like a general oh, star uh, or an admiral uh, star. You got like a name. one star admiral and a two star admiral, don't you? And a three star admiral. So he'd be a three star admiral. Yeah. Okay. Or two, if I'm wrong. Some uh, some uh, Stu said two. Yeah, I was going to guess B, but I've gone with C now. You've convinced me. <laughs> Something tells me it's not D. I don't know. Something in my gut says it's not 44. <laughs> it's actually, that's it's, that's four, I think. <laughs> and then question 4A. Oh. But ah. question 4A is merged oh. in with four, I think. So. Yeah, D's I mean, not you know, it wouldn't surprise me for Sean to put 47 in as an answer, but yeah, not 44. Yeah, usually we get a sneaky 47 in there somewhere, but no, I think it's one, two, three, or four. Um, I guessed four, but looking at what everybody else has guessed, I think potentially I could be wrong. <laughs> potentially. I to, potentially, I could be wrong. Potentially. I don't know. Uh, we've we've I'm, got I'm, three different answers, so, you know, we'll see, won't we? One um, thing I noticed about okay. this shot was they went through a long tunnel, didn't they? Because, you know, they were like two kilometers in and they were still going, you know. So they eventually yeah. got to it like three kilometers in and they collapsed the entrance. But it seems to be right in front right of next the time. Enterprise. So did it collapse not just the entrance, but like pretty much the entire tunnel? The whole tunnel. Yeah. Or, you know, three kilometers of it or whatever. It's pretty extensive. Probably so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So, what have Getting we got? Getting in engineering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you notice? Oh, let uh, we've got. Oh, we've got Will there as well. Now I was going to say we've got Mariner. Is that Thomas Riker or Will? I'm not quite sure which. It was just a GIF of Riker screaming. <laughs> ah, very cool. Um. Oh, it might have been from that one where he was playing that part you know oh yeah where he oh, was no, like no, in, was... A, in a mental uh hospital yeah right? yeah i reckon um okay sorry goofs right so um did you notice the uss pegasus registry i didn't only oh, that it has a 47 it? in it where is it it does oh. at the end yep uh, five three eight four seven there we go 47 um uh, uh and what else have we got so um data says they've got to oh yeah that's oh, an incorrect goof somebody's said that you know um that they put life support going and they've extended shields but mm. how were they able to transport over because they can't transport through shields and i'm like well extended they extended the shields. the shields so you're not going through any shields so i don't know who put yeah. that on but clearly clearly wrong um so the dead crew of the Pegasus are, oh, yeah, and I forgot to say, because obviously everybody is dead, Dave. They're all dead. Chen's dead. dead. Peterson's dead. Everybody's dead. Everybody is dead, Dave. Um, had to get that one in. Um, 
so yeah it's not really explained how the bodies are so well preserved i mean they said oh the vacuum of space or something but actually they would have been frozen to like zero you know kelvin or whatever um and also there was a whole breach which would have probably been quite damaging um but they all look like nothing's happened so a bit odd there mm. um i would think that with the cold and the vacuum it would be like you know what what's that um freeze drying meat yeah, that but, sounded I mean, bad. That sounded worse than I thought. <laughs> that sounded better in my head. <laughs> the thing is, though, I think that they they presume that's what happened when you go out in space. But the bodies would look horrific, actually, if they were exposed to space. Yeah, they, because and all the blood are, starts boiling yeah. and and all this other stuff, so they would look horrible. They would exactly look like, that. like someone with there or a sausage in a microwave. Oh. But it's a family show, so I guess they've just kind of gone, oh, look, they're perfectly preserved. Therefore, it's a they family to... show. Yeah. There is a quote they've I learned their the lesson from the parasite blast off that Riker. And... <laughs> there was a, a behind the scenes quote I saw the other day. It was uh, somebody was talking with Gene, and this was when they were getting set up to do TNG. And Gene started talking about... Uh, er, um, Gene Ronberry, he started talking about Betazoid sexuality and getting really in depth with it, like really way too in depth. And then he started, <laughs> they said, okay, well, let's talk about something else. And they was like, okay, well, let me tell you about the Ferengi because, you know, the Ferengi were the new creature of the week they were going to introduce mm. in the first season. And he sits there, he goes, let me go into the 47 different positions they can do and he goes gene this is a family show i don't need to hear about this <laughs> and I, I was like I, I saw this and i was like i can see this transpiring because i know gene roddenberry was a military <laughs> man and i know he had the humor for it and i can just see this going on behind the, i don't know if this is a i, I feel like i'm pretty sure this is a, ver a valid quote that somebody was saying I think I saw it on uh, Memory Alpha somewhere in the the uh, mm. bottom, yeah. like it's trivia. It's probably pretty area. well researched. But it was it was just it stuck in my mind when you said this is a family show. It came right back because <laughs> <laughs> that was like half of his like startup. <laughs> yeah, he did like things racy, didn't he? Oh God! Oh, that's my oh my for the the day. There you go. I'll give it to you. We oh we've got an my. entire. <laughs> I just don't want to think about Ferengis and forty-seven positions, but there you go. Not really. <laughs> no. Laz, have you contributed an oh my for the episode? Everyone else has. Yeah. Been a bit. I don't know. Fabulous. Did I? Oh, the eating of the banana. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, so, uh, oh, they finally got a canon explanation for why the Federation doesn't have um, cloaking devices. Because before, like, yes. I think Gene Roddenberry's original, yeah. original position was, we're explorers, we don't go sneaking around, which wasn't really a very good kind of reason. Um, they've also said things like, um, you know, the cloaking device harms humans, that it wouldn't work on Federation ships, mm. uh, things like that. But now, you know, they've got sort of a good, good kind of, you know, treaty reason why which is really great the treaty of um, alderon yeah not, that no, might be a question later not, you never not, know not alderon <laughs> alderon 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 so, yeah you know, that was the that was the planet was destroyed in star wars wasn't it oh yeah alderon was the star wars yeah yeah, yeah not alderon <laughs> yeah alderon's so, peaceful <laughs> and the fact that they're holding back on cloaking devices does um sort of represent a bit of a, a shift from uh, what their thinking was in the episode The Enterprise Incident in 1968 where Kirk, Spock and co. had no qualms about stealing cloaking technology um, but you know, that's fine, whatever we'll let them off um, and the final one is that uh, when they were transporting out of um, the Pegasus not that it really matters, it's just an observation um, they, they're both there and they take the big device with them but the tricorder that Pressman was just using he puts it on the top of a little unit there and as they transport out he leaves his tricorder behind so 
just getting a bit lazy with your enterprise equipment that you're just leaving places in other ships. <laughs> yeah. I wonder who in inventory at some point is going to go, hey, guys, we're missing a tricorder. Where's that gone? <laughs> it, it, you know, for the longest time, I always thought they just replicated those things like on demand, like, oh, I need a pad or I need a tricorder for this day. But if Lower Decks has taught me anything, it's that's not the case because Tendi and Rutherford have an entire thing where they're trying to track down a new tricorder that you know is just released <laughs> so it, it probably think. left on the pegasus <laughs> yeah like just gonna leave your tricorder man brilliant uh that's about it for that act so what's the uh, answers to the questions then tammy put us oh, out yeah, of our misery variety. you're muted the answer is b my cheek is full of candy uh, like a hamster. Oh, <laughs> Plum gets it. Oh, I didn't. I nearly got it. Right. And the bonus right. is starboard. Hey, look at that. Ah. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway there. I got something out of it then. Yeah. So we got well, tired Plum cleaned roof. up that time then. Tired but I was Monty roof. Food. Just tired Monty roof then. Is that right? Hmm. I think so. Monty, tired, Ruth, yep. And Tabby. And Tabby. And of course, the Tabby Kins. Doing very well, standing in for Wookie Tabby. <laughs> right, let's spin the wheel. <gasps> oh. <laughs> It's me. Yeah. It was nearly Tavi. It was nearly uh, points yeah. lost to us three, but uh, luckily I came in clutch right at the end there. Right. Oh, it is too. For well, some reason, I thought there was. I'll be back in one on moment. It. It's two, but it's two on each side, so I thought it was four. Right. Ah. Uh, because he's yeah. got one, two, three. I four. thought it was two bars of three, but maybe not. So there you go. I was counting both sides. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So as Time Lord saying that that's actually the same thing repeated twice. So yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. Probably Sean knows that. He knows a bit of like military. He does. Uh, yeah. Know how. Okay, cool. So Act five. The final act. Duplum is now in the lead by quite a margin. Wow, <laughs> so well done, 100, Duplum. A hundred point question. It's <laughs> uh, a good shot there. I thought it was another good shot of the uh, Enterprise. I like all those shots yeah. in this episode. Um, they're hailed by Sirol again, who says that innocently they were conducting a geological experiment on the surface. If only they had known that the Enterprise was in there, this could have easily been avoided. Cyril offers to beam the entire crew out and transport them to Romulus, where eventually, after a short stay, they would be returned to the Federation. Because, like, thanks, but no thanks. That doesn't sound particularly uh, appetising, does it? <laughs> Picard wants options. Worf wants to phaser their way out. But data advises against that as the asteroid structure is unstable. It's a very sort of typical option from Ford, isn't it? Uh, from Wolf. It's like, blast it! <laughs> Let's blast it! <laughs> Riker points Bless out that the. Uh, Bless Wolf. Riker points out that the Admiral has just the tool for the job in his quarters a cloaking device. <laughs> the Admiral tells Riker he's finished. You're finished, my lad. You'll never work in this town again. Yes, yeah, right. Of course, at this point, I don't know why Riker thinks that saying a cloaking device is going to get him out of this bind. But Technically, personally, I would like to say, I don't feel like that's a cloaking device. I think they found a loophole here. Hmm. Picard is shot. Uh, this revelation that they have a cloaking device as it contravenes the Treaty of Algeron. Algeron, not Alderon. Echoing the sentiments of the original crew. 
The Admiral has had enough, though. He issues an order that he's taking command of the Enterprise and orders Worf to escort Captain Picard to his quarters. Worf and the crew, though, stand by Picard. I like quite like that when Worf just like looked at the captain and was just like, "Nope." <laughs> Sorry about that. My dog reminded me that I had not fed her. <laughs> oh. Was she They'll starting to that. like nudge the bowl around the room? <laughs> Yeah, she picks it up and she drops it right in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chewie likes to bat it across the room as hard as he can. Right. It's like, oh, Makes enough right. noise that you yeah. do something about it. <laughs> uh, Picard wants to know how a cloaking device is going to help them in their current situation. And Riker explains how it's more than just a cloaking device. It changes the structure of matter, in theory, allowing a ship to pass through normal matter as though it's not there. He thinks it could be adapted to work with the Enterprise. Data reports that it may take a couple of hours. So Data... Oh, so uh, Picard orders Data to make it so. We get a captain's log stating that they have been trapped now inside the asteroid for eight hours. But with Geordi and Data's help, they're now ready to engage the metaphasic cloaking device. Geordi reports that they're going to have to watch the intercooler levels as it's liable to break. On the bridge, Riker theorizes that this is what must have happened years ago. The intercoolers leaked plasma into space and it made it look like the ship had exploded, but instead the ship had actually phased and then eventually decloaked inside the asteroid. So that means then the crew didn't die in an explosion. The, the ship just looks like it exploded and then cloaked, <coughs> drifted into an asteroid and then decloaked inside the asteroid and they all sort of died a long suffocating death it's not very nice is it that's it's just kind of, terrible yeah. it's kind of worse especially the ones that are in the back of the ship where the rock was that's oh not, can that's you not, imagine being well, i guess that would be instantaneous though well maybe but they're inside rock it reminds me of the philadelphia experiment you know mm. um, like oh yeah, I've, I remember hearing about that. They uh, the the ship teleported. I, mm. I put quotations up yet. Yeah. And when it came back, the crew was kind of all merged with the ship. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> uh, they proceeded what, with the what, the, the, the the sister ship to the Discovery or mm? the Glen. That's the name of the sister ship, the Glen. For the discovery, yeah, but not not the Philadelphia. Oh, Wait, the Phil, no, the Philadelphia is a a real well. Not it's a well, yeah, yeah. It's 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 in that cryptozoologic field. Okay. Um, Monty would know more. He does that on the Monty Zone, right? <laughs> yes, but no, it's, it's I watched kind of a little like, bit. It's a myth, but they turned it into a film. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Yeah, where they, like like the the navy and the CIA wanted to develop a cloaking device for a frigate, so um, when they did it, the the frigate sort of instead of cloaking, like went into another dimension, oh. uh, and eventually the crew managed to get the ship back to our, to our dimension, but when but they at what cost? But in our dimension, the ship actually just blinked out of existence briefly, and as the but the crew didn't. And as the crew fell, they ended up like half in the floor and half out the floor or half in a bulkhead and half out of a bulkhead. So they sort of ended up half merged with the ship. Oh. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. that episode, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, they... Uh, so they, pr uh, they proceed with the cloaking. This is the Enterprise there uh, cloaking inside the... Um, inside the asteroid the enterprise cloaks and the gizmo is working as planned they fly towards the rock face but instead of going kablooey they go straight through it and this is what they see on the view screen as they travel through solid rock 
They clear the asteroid, and Picard orders them to disengage the cloak, much to the Admiral's objection, because, you know, it'll show the Romulans what they have. Picard orders Worf to send a message to the Romulans, telling them that their government will be issued with a statement from Starfleet regarding this incident, and he places the Admiral under arrest for violating the Treaty of Alderaan. Riker wants to be arrested as well, and Picard agrees. So they both get arrested. Later, Picard visits uh, Riker in the brig and tells him that St uh, St Fleet Admiral Shanti has said that a full inquiry into the Pegasus incident will take place once the ship reaches Starbase 247, which would result in a general court-martial for Pressman and several other Starfleet Admirals. He warns Riker that he too will face some tough questions and the truth may lose him some respect that he's earned since the days of the Pegasus. But he came forward and he did the right thing. So as long as he wants to wear that uniform, Picard will continue to be proud to have him as his first officer. And the episode ends with the two of them leaving the brig together. And that is the end of this episode. And it's question time. Muscle dead munching. Yay. Oh, yeah. Now we finished the stream. <laughs> the beard is in the background. Yay. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Beard. Evening. And alrighty, let's get that in the chat. What is the treaty that prevents the Federation from developing cloaks? A, Treaty of Algeron. B, Treaty of Armens. C, Treaty of Catan. D, Treaty of Organia. <laughs> and the bonus is which ship later gets a cloak as the treaty has been then amended? Amended. Yes. Wow, well, tired of Maz were like in there. Bosh! <laughs> well, Bosh. When, in, during the episode here, when they, when the Admiral tries to, you know, take control and he's like, I'm in charge of this ship, I feel like Picard was like, Your forehead is not as shiny as mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would make a good, uh, that would make a good sketch, wouldn't it? He turns to Worf and Worf goes, my forehead is ridged. Don't look to me for answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did notice that cool. um, there was Starbase 247, so there was another 47 reference there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, another one. Another, another one. one. Another um, one. Another little <laughs> bits and bobs <laughs> as well. So Pegasus is an Oberth class starship it so was. it was originally going to be a chayen class um, yeah i noticed that there was a diagram in engineer in the engineering section of four warp cells. nacelles for like modern yeah. warp nacelles and i was like so they changed you know, they changed their mind a... so they didn't have to construct a new model um I if I yeah. have a picture of that uh, <laughs> oh you can't quite see it but there's a picture back there those like four like purple things are like warp ah, nacelles yeah. There's like the power going spot. to the warp core to like four warp nacelles. And I was like, there's no birth class. It doesn't have four warp Me nacelles. and Mazda both did this, like got close to the screen. You could just see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't quite. I was, I was doing that earlier, peering at what um, Picard was eating. It looked like it was like shredded beef and vegetables on a banana leaf or something. But um, anyway, yeah. um, cool. No so, no and also in a birth class ship, is about a fifth of the length and width of um, the Enterprise, or less than. Oh, it's uh, tiny. But when you see that shot of them yeah. both together, it only looks like it's about half the size of the Enterprise, so mm. um, they've kind of scaled it wrongly. Um, is, sorry, I was just going to say, I wonder who, what ship would win in a fight, a, a modern, well, a, I say modern, a TNG-era O'Berth or a, a TOS-era Constitution, because the O'Berth is like a small frigate for its time, a very tiny, you know, ship, but it's packed with that 24th century technology. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I just had that thought. It would be it an interesting fight. 
popped There's in only there. one way to find out. Yep, Fine. I might have to do that. <laughs> Have you got like trump cards, you know, with the different uh, sort of starships and stuff? You could pitch them against each well, other. Time so Lord like uh, like sets them against each other in like a sort of simulation. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Nice. It's, uh, Star Trek Legacy is the game, mm. which is funny because the name, you know, if they do make a Legacy series, they're gonna have to find some way to get around that interesting <laughs> club up. But uh, mm. it's uh, it, it's just a it's the last space sim we had, you know, before Star Trek Online came out. Mm. And really, I, I I'm going to do an entire top video on this topic. But we need a new Star Trek space sim, and Star Trek Online is killing the potential for that because they're still making money off of it. They're not going to make a single player game that could compete mm. against it. And so the last games we have are over a decade old. And so the videos or all my videos where I, you see gameplay and whatnot are from that game, you know, yeah, and hitting different. Yeah. Well, I started with Star Trek Online, but yeah. now I'm using Star Trek Legacy because right. I can set up the battles with up to 64 ships, wow. you know. Um, but I got to be careful how I do it, because even with modern systems, there's a CPU bottleneck that causes some serious frame rate issues. Mm. um but like i did like the enterprise j versus a bunch of during a bunch uh, a fleet of terran constitution classes um which was just ridiculous to watch it blow up everything but i would be interested <laughs> to see an oberth versus a constitution class i love those the mat the giant the dynamic matchups between a small ship from the future and a big ship from the past mm. Mm. I've monopolized our time enough. I'm going to... Sh no, that's no, good. It is fun. It is fun. We like you. We like you. I want to remind Montalban before I do any more trips and stuff, you haven't answered the question yet. Oh, well, it's... So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put the same thing. It up. Um, so what else did I have? Um, uh, this is the first Star Trek episode since the Enterprise incident in which the Enterprise uses a cloaking device. Um, this episode, I think you mentioned this earlier, is foreshadowed, albeit probably unintentionally, by the next phase where the Romulans are trying to de develop a cloaking device mm. that can phase through matter. I wonder if, you know, they did get an inkling as to Star Trek had, uh, Starfleet had something like this and they were sort of already running to catch up, perhaps. But ah, Good um, evening, Chris. Yeah. I hope you're well, sir. Uh, welcome to the stream. Ha -ha! It's Q. It's Q. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, and then the that's the thing, though, isn't it? That's the thing, though. They 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 come across this thing, didn't they, from the next phase, and to like bring them out of it, they like knew how that worked. So mm. technically, why didn't they recreate? They already had, you know. It's like oh, so like if you do that, you end up becoming invisible and phased out of this reality mm. so they they could do that already <laughs> so the Romulans, like, yes. why, yeah why so why were that? they after uh, i mean so i guess I... they were trying to stop starfleet from getting their hands back on this prototype right but i don't mm. know and they, they is... were dealing with the phasing uh in that episode where ro laren and Jordy ended up phasing out so mm. this is not too far off from that right so so you've heard me mention red shirts before in when we've mm -hmm. been talking and mm. this is a perfect example of the narrative um where the, there's deus ex machina at the last second talking about how they they technically had the the phasing ability you know they were just missing that last crucial component in the book red shirts there this is explained that in in all these episodes they you know they're always missing that last crucial component what ends up happening is there's a black box that it's like a microwave and it just dings and prints out a pad and they say take this pad to one of the main cast and then make up some techno babble and it'll have the answer on it and they're like are you kidding me this is how we solve these things <laughs> and it just makes me think about that talking about how you know they they had everything was right except for the last thing to get the phasing you know they needed that last thing that's the narrative that's the red shirts narrative that's i'm i'm re-watching <laughs> all of these through the lens of the main cast is oblivious shirt. to the horrors of what's going on around them <laughs> and the, the the crew is fully intelligent knowing okay i don't want to go near wharf or Riker or 
the doctor. I don't want to go to sick bay because I might run into the doctor. You know, <laughs> if I get Brilliant. caught up in the plot, I'm going to be next week's red shirt. <laughs> But yes, not only did they they have this technology in theory from saving Ro and Jordy in the next phase, but they also had a working um, cloaking device from their captured Klingon bird of prey, the Bounty, from Star Trek IV, which we later see in Picard is in like the Starfleet Museum. But they they had a cloaking device. They you know they know how cloaking devices work. So if they wanted to use one and break the treaty, you know they could do because they've had one since for like the last hundred years in their museum. Mm. <laughs> Kirk already did the heavy lifting. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, the other thing is that in Ronald D. Moore's first draft of the teleplay, Riker was punished more severely for the Pegasus affair, being sentenced to 30 days in the brig and being given a formal repri- reprimand. I mean, in this one, like, obviously, he says, oh, you know, you're going to be questioned about this a lot, but I still trust you. And then they kind of walk off. I guess there was never any repercussions, right? No, they never mentioned it again. Mm. I know this of. was the last proper Romulan story. Um, and the other three bits of stuff I've got are all kind of relating to the same thing. So um, I, I don't know. Obviously, I sometimes tune out and I'm looking at chat. But have you mentioned about these are the voyages? No. Enterprise, so the, yep. the Enterprise season finale um, takes place during oh, this episode. yes. No, we have mentioned Riker that. Yes, and Troy... Uh, running some simulation to decide whether or not to tell Captain Picard about the cloaking device. Yeah. Um, you know, so one is like with all the action that happens, where on earth would he have found the time to do that? Um, and the other one is that Troy only appears in the teaser for this episode, but obviously in the Enterprise series finale, um, you know, she, she it shows what she was sort of doing and why she wasn't kind of present in the episode. So, mm. yeah, I just thought it was quite neat to sort of just tie that loop around. Chris said they also do kind of like shifting out of uh, phase, phase shifting and discovery with the sort of uh, the mushroom mycelia network. The way uh, they yeah. travel, they kind of shift out of phase and blink back into wherever they want to be mm-hmm. using the, mm-hmm. you know, the mushroom network. I know a lot of people hate the mushroom warp drive, but I really love it, mostly because I deal with like soil and and whatnot, but like a mycelial a mycelial network actually does exist in our soils, and that's how nutrients are passed back and forth. And I thought it was awesome because we see so many uh, uh, space animals in Star Trek, but no one ever brings up the biology of warp capable space creatures like the crystalline entity, that thing that was breastfeeding off of the the Enterprise once, yeah. and it's like. Is anybody yeah, following these point. creatures around? And I thought it was just awesome that in Discovery, they brought on a biological form of travel because a lot of technology has already been mastered with elegance by nature. So why not copy nature? Because that's what a lot of engineers do when they, they get stumped and they need a new way to do something. It's like, okay, has this existed in our environment that we could observe yet? So even though everyone, I think, takes a big dump on the on the whole mushroom flying thing, it, it actually is solid. Like, uh, I mean, I guess like former dorks like me thinking about, you know, compost or going mycelial networks, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that was my, my rambling about that. Very cool. Do you know, um, a guy actually sued the makers of Discovery for stealing his like ip who did i saw that it i um, think it fizzled out after a while but it, there was some interesting it, he didn't the, he didn't have the money to fight cbs and their lawyers they basically like priced him out of uh any lawsuits because he just couldn't keep the lawsuit going um 
don't know if I can... Can I do that? No, I can't do that. Uh, hang on a minute. I, uh, I'll show you. Yeah, I was it's looking really for... It's really sad after a while, because a lot of people... A lot of people write to used to oh. write to CBS and their shows that they liked. And the shows would publish a really good story if someone had a good idea. And so, now, because people have said, oh, you stole my story... Um, they've had to protect themselves when in, in the actuality there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody's already thought of, of your version of the story, believe it or not. And and it's it's you know, at this point in time we're doing a mashup of a lot of these concepts and, and spin-offs. So but I mean I think it's really bad for a lot of fans that used to love submitting their scripts that could have mm. actually become an episode. Um but now you can't because, you know. This guy, really um, Anas uh, Abdin, he created a game um, and he took the concept to CBS to see if they wanted to make like a show out of it. And in this game, there's uh, the ship is powered by a giant tardigrade who uses mushrooms to access a network to transport the ship around there's a uh, 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 the lead black female character is like an action black female character there's a science lady with red hair there's a uh, a, a gay doctor uh, the engineer is like this blonde guy he pointed out like all the things, all the things in his game are uh, like the uh, there's a lot of similarities to his game and his pitch that he did to CBS than what ended up in TNG uh, in Discovery. Sorry. So did they bring him in for a pitch or did he send it in? He he sent it in as a pitch to try to get oh. them to see if they could like you know make make something of it um and they turned him down they but... didn't they didn't he didn't read their publication page <laughs> if you send in anything it's our property so don't send in anything we didn't ask i don't for. think he sent it in i think he actually went in and, and did like a, uh, a presentation but so i'm looking at the court write-up and i i dropped it in the private chat on our side but um mm. It looks like the second court or second circuit court here in the U.S. said that the the concepts and uh, that w he was claiming were ripped off um, were not. Um, basically, they said it wasn't protected and that they yes. they weren't close enough to constitute infringement. He, you know, there's nothing in. He just took character pictures from the game that. He, he and matched them up saying oh i think this character would match like that but yeah they're not really the engineer like the the blonde guy there i don't think he's actually the engineer i think he was like a, a marine actually or something like that but uh yeah and the the cbs's position was tardigrades have long been spoken of that they could survive in space this is a scientific fact and so that's where the idea of a you know tardigrade being used in space travel comes from um and so they said well i guess the, yeah basically he backed down sorry <laughs> i'm i'm taking a long road to a short thought <laughs> yeah i mean each one of those things is like a bit tenuous but when you put it all together i mean please <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he did a presentation to the producers of discovery yeah. and you know, uh, they just happen to come up with this idea themselves. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, yeah, hopefully he's made also enough money off the publicity that he's you know done okay out of it. But I don't I would know. Have, I would have thought yeah. so. I mean, there was some crowdfunding things going for him and that sort of thing because his mm. legal costs, you know, wiped him out and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, uh, there we Shame. go. Um, yes, yeah, so that was the end of the episode. What was the uh, final uh, question answers there, Tammy? Alrighty. The final question answers are A, and for the bonus, Defiant. Oh, yeah. This was the only one on the original, not the Sao Paulo Defiant. 
So the only uh, cloaking device was on the original, not the Sao Paulo Defiant. That one was destroyed. Yeah. Um, so we got Time Lord, Maz, Ruth, me, and Stu Plum. That's everyone. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to... Uh... Ah, you got that one right, hubbiness. Good. He's done well this evening, hasn't he? Pretty. I'm winning. Guess this week last week. He's done very well. Uh, Sweetie, put that luck on a lottery ticket. <laughs> uh, Tally, I want Monty, two dollars on the lottery. Mass. I think that's it, isn't it? Is that it? is that everyone? Did you? Well done. We, is that everyone? Does it, does it I'm guessing that is everyone. Yeah, that's right. Right, I'm spinning the final wheel of the night. Uh, no, it shouldn't have had to do on it. Oh, shouldn't it not? Sorry. No, one, two, three. We'll, f we'll forget who, who, who won that one. No, yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't it have been. Should have to hey, uh, it won. He just Give answered. It the <laughs> he just answered. Defiant. A, but without the defiant. No, no he said it later. Oh, on. he put it later. Yeah, he later. Said, so oh, it was God. Ruth. Yeah, oh, he's pretty We didn't cock that up royally at all. No, <laughs> it, was, it was all supposed to be like that. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we'll call her close to the bingo, right? So close to the bingo, close to the quiz. Maz and Tavikins are going to count up those scores. So if everyone in live chat, if you want to start thinking about what would you give this episode out of ten, from zero to ten, uh, what would you what would you give it? And uh, oh, Chris is gutted because he's missed all the questions. Oh, <laughs> uh, join earlier, oh, Chris. Join earlier. The questions yes. in YouTube. There's a little bell sign. It means you'll be reminded when the episode yes. starts. Hit, hit the <laughs> notification bell. And if you haven't done so, if you want to hit the like button as well while you're there, um, you can yeah. you can do that as well. Um, yeah, look at me being all YouTubey. <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and um, and all that jazz. I've yeah. been trying to add little trailers like that, you know, to, uh, like the video, you know, at the end of my stuff. Did the <laughs> one with Moopsy where I'm running from him. That was my son's idea, actually. He said, you should do something where you're running from Moopsy. I was like, that is a great idea. I'm going to do that. Uh, you've got kind of a natural comic timing with those things. There's just something that's just very fun and funny about your... Uh... Yeah. I appreciate that. I uh, I don't. Uh, I never really thought of myself as a funny person. So you know, I've been having fun with these though. It's been pretty good. It's working for you. It's working. Um, Definitely. Yes. Oh, he, Chris has had his friend. And he's had a friend. Uh... No, he said I have my friends, oh, and I leave friend. comments to boost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much, Chris. You do, well, he yes. Yes, he Yay. leaves comments in the videos. That's brilliant. Yes, finally, we don't we don't usually have comments on this show, but Chris, Chris is being a good <laughs> good uh, friend of the show and <laughs> has been leaving some comments, which is very good. Thank you very much. Lovely. And the last yeah, show did any really well, actually. Or anything? Eh? Oh, did it? Yeah, I have to say the um, the last 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 week's show. I'm just bringing up my YouTube account. Hang on, hang on a sec. Um, talk amongst yourselves. I was very surprised because it did a hundred. <coughs> it done a hundred, hundred and twenty views. Oh, because we only only get like fifty or sixty usually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whole, yeah, so it's pretty good. I was very surprised by that. Got a couple so, of nines in chat, nines out of ten of so nines. far. So keep them coming. Yep. Yeah. Any oh. other sort of reception comments, thoughts about the episode? Um, well, yeah, it was just about the. Um, I thought I loved the opening with uh, the Picard Day and um, Riker, you know, taking the mick out of the captain for for it i thought that was quite nice and how they had all the children's paintings and stuff it's a really sweet way of opening it i thought um and i liked all the space shots of the asteroid belts and the enterprise flying through uh we had not only the enterprise but we had a warbird we had an excelsior we had no birth so the ship porn for me was strong 
um, <laughs> which is just. You know. I have a trivia question for anyone uh, that's relevant. Okay. What other show did the Picard banner appear in? Uh, uh, Big Picard. Bang Theory? Uh, oh, is it, it was a Star, what, a Star Trek show. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was. It was in Chat. It was in the Chateau, wasn't it? It, it was in his his locker with Starfleet, oh, where all of his it? captain mementos are, and it's the uh, big. It's right in the background when he walks in. It's yeah. the same banner. Mm -hmm. They keep yeah, all the stuff, don't they? It's the third season of Picard. It could have been in Lower Decks, Decks, to be honest. Was it in Lower Seems Decks? Seems like something in would like have been in Lower Decks. I, seem, I think it might be. Uh, it might have been in Lower Decks in a museum, mightn't it? Uh, They're not the same prop, but the same concept, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know. I'm going to have to oh, Google Chris that. Is, Chris is uh, waiting for your cryptid vids. So um, your Monty Zones, right? Ah, the Monty Zone. Next Monty Zone. Um, what, what's the date, actually? There's got to be one coming up. We do it the last Friday of a month. So... Uh, yeah, there's got to be... Um, that would be the 29th. That would be next Friday. Yeah, there, there should be one next Friday. I'll have to sort that out with G this weekend. But yes, Monty Zone will be due next Friday for anybody interested in that. Nice. Coming along and... Are we getting uh, close to Bingo Squires? Getting there. Or have I missed them in chat? We're getting there. Okay. The only bit of reception stuff I have is that um, Ronald Moore noted that this episode has similar themes to uh, of honor and duty to the first duty where Wesley um, uh, you know was sort of covering up what happened in that what was it like the starburst or something where they were doing a, a, a trick um, but obviously Wesley didn't have the sort of good record uh, uh, benefit of a good, good record like in his career to sort of atone for that but yeah um, Similar themes. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> Poor Wheaton. I know. He's a funny guy, though. I met him once <clears throat> at, at Awesome Con in DC. And I did oh, not cool. know this that he has, uh, I guess, a germophobia. <clears throat> oh. And I took a photo with him. And I didn't, I didn't realize, I should have thought of this. When you go to a convention, if you take a photo with somebody, don't just assume it's all right to like put your arm around them or something, mm. uh, which I did with bad on me. You know, I did not think of that. And, but Will Wheaton did not, you know, have a problem with it. Apparently in the past he has though, and he's flipped out on fans. Um, oh, so right. I, was, I was lucky and I felt bad after I heard of oh, that. Wait, after wait. I, and I and now I've got this photo with me and him in it. I tried reaching out on Twitter. I was like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just in case you see this, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for doing that. He was really nice, though. I met him and Felicia Day. They were uh, doing photos together and they were both very nice, very sweet. Ah, very cool. Mm. I haven't met anybody from Star Trek, so. Uh... You know, maybe one day. Maybe. Um, one day on a cruise. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I did find this oh. from Lower Decks. They, um, they had a... Boimler did a happy Freeman day. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Picard day was at least done by children. Boimler's like so proud of himself. <laughs> it's close though, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's not far off. Yeah. like it. There you go. I knew there was some reference to it. I mean, there, there was bound to be, wasn't there, really? But... I can't <laughs> wait for the next season of Lower Decks. I'm so excited. When's that I out? I want to see Tendi, you know, kick ass and come back. Oh, yes. Because she's, um, you know when it's she's off being a, a pirate queen or something. <laughs> Mistress of the Winter Constellations. That's it. Mistress <laughs> of the Winter Crikey, yes. I don't know. Smiler's off to Betty Bobo's. Mazram. Uh, Mazram. Night, night, Smiler. Okay, so um, I've got to get Mazram my spreadsheet Jensen. up. Oh, yeah. I met Jensen Button, but yeah, not Star Trek related. Not, not Star but Trek. It was no. pretty cool at the time for us Formula One fans. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got my score sheet. Ah. Uh. 
I've got my makeshift paddle. Yeah, I didn't bring my paddle. I didn't have I don't have any checked baggage in Norway. So um uh you know, I couldn't really I brought my uniform. You just have to hold up some fingers. I, I bring everything else. I will I will do fingers. <laughs> okay, so who's in first place? Well, I can't because I, I don't have the bingo scores yet, oh. so we're still waiting. Oh, I'm getting there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we have to close bingo at the end of Act 4 because I think it takes a bit of a while, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so what else about this episode then? Um, I thought, the, uh, I thought yeah, the, the guy was good. Um, John Locke as the Admiral. I can't remember his actual name, but he, to me, he's just John Locke from Lost. Terry O'Quinn, I think. Terry O'Quinn. Have you not seen Lost? Time long years. A- I, I have, but it's been a long time. Um, yeah, I've only ever seen it once. I remember the biggest scene I remember is Hurley telling everyone about Charlie's death. And like, I always used to think if, if Hurley's walking towards you with that face, it's never good news. It's a sad day. Sad sad day. I thought though he was really good and lost as luck. It's just a shame. Really? The end of lost kind of ruins the whole thing a bit like game of Thrones, really, but um, it's still, I do remember him now. He's he was the guy trying to get into that the the underground tunnel thing for a while. Yes, because he was the guy who started off in a wheelchair and then yes. like and nobody knew because he could just suddenly walk again. Yeah, for some reason on the island he just got his legs back. You know he could walk again. Sean, hey, hey old devil. Evening, sorry guys, doing a late scene. How's everybody? We are well. We're just waiting for Tavikins to come in with the bingo scores. Um, she's, she's done the bingo scores now. I'm just adding them onto the thingy. So yeah. we'll be with you momentarily. You're, you can score I, this episode I now, Sean. You're here. Point. Um, okay. If he is so, here. He may be here. Ooh. Oh, Last right. position <laughs> with 440 TNG nope, points is Stuplum. Stuplum? First position, so 10 points to Stuplum. Well done, Stuplum. He's Ooh, not here. He's got this goal, isn't he? I think. Is he gone? Wait, anyway, you, I don't you know. can first. He didn't say goodnight, don't can you hear me? Yes, we can, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you, yeah. yeah. Okay, so sorry, OBS froze. That's all. Ooh, oh, John in the black shirt. Unbuttoned yes. top there. So. I know. See what Wookiee's been He's, bringing his, old, old, he's bringing his oh my in late. Oh yeah. my. Boom. Oh my! Second Oopsie. place. It's Sean, joint you missed second it. I had place. Noopsie, mm-hmm. And then I had a bunch of other people start joining me in my background. <laughs> <laughs> joint second place is Monty and Ruth. So nine points for Ooh, both nine each. Nine points. Nine points for you. And nine and points for Ruth. Next is myself. So. I get seven points. Seven points. Um, and then next is Time Lord seven with points. six points. Tired Time Lord with six points. And then six next nine. is Gujom. 265 points he's got with like Gujum. guessing. Wow. That's amazing. How many Impressive. was that? Five? Uh, that's five points, yes. Um, and then next is Tavikins with 45 points on the bingos. So that's four points to Tavikins. And then <laughs> finally, we've got Smiler um, with 30 points on the bingo. So that's three points to Smiler. Well, there we go. I think uh, that means, yeah, there's not been a, an actual move of place. I have joined you, Maz, in, in joint... Uh, Oh. In joint third place. Exciting. But apart from that, there's only one point now between Stuplum and Ruth at the top. It's between oh, Ruth and Stuplum. Very close. Very good. There's only so many more episodes to get points. Yeah, we're halfway. So it's all to play for at the moment. Right. Have you got your paddles or fingers ready? As the case may be. Oh. Stuplum is shot that you won, I think. <laughs> yeah, you won, Stuplum. You won. Um, good. Okay. Three, two, one. Is that a nine from you, Mouse? 
That's a nine. A nine from me. A seven and a seven and a ten. Oh, I like your uh, your uh, nice makeshift. Spread. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool. How did you do that? It looked, it, like looked it, was glowing. it looked like it was glowing. Oh, that was, it was just my phone. Um, <laughs> ah. and it, kept, your phone. it kept blinking out because of the that's background good. thing. <laughs> oh. I like it. So, um, uh, and nine, so nine, nine, seven, seven, and the audience was. So, no, because um, Sean scored 10. Oh, Sean. <laughs> sorry. So, Time Lord's score goes into the audience average, yes. um, which seven, is... Seven, seven. Bruce is seven. <laughs> Time Lord is seven. For the audience, we had two nines and two sevens, so it oh, averages eight. us eight. Mute before right. I pull my nose. <laughs> That's going to be a high-scoring episode, then. It's the second yeah, highest episode good episodes, of the season. Two good weeks. Yeah, though, you know, good, good. I think right now, though, the Parallels and the Pegasus, those are two strong episodes, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Parallels is just my favorite. It, it's so my good. favorite in the entire series. It, it's definitely one of my favorite episodes. It's in, it's in, I think it's in my top three, probably, mm. of the, all of the series. Yeah. Yeah, next week, a little bit, little bit weaker. Is it? What's next week? <laughs> a little bit. Just a tiny little bit weaker. Oh, God, it's uh, not, is it? It is. Homeward. <laughs> oh, no. Oh it's, oh, it's Homeward. Oh, it's not what I thought it was. Oh. I thought it was sorry, Sub Rosa. <laughs> oh, no. No, no that's, that's brilliantly awful. Uh, no, Homeward. The one with Worf's <laughs> half -word. Oh. That's not a terrible episode. Not it's, yeah, no, episode. it's not terrible, but it, it's nowhere near the Pegasus and Parallels. It, Subrosa is cringy. It's so... Subrosa is after uh, Homeward. It's... So we've got okay. Homeward, then Subrosa. So uh, two interesting it, it's so, Subrosa is so bad, it's good. You know, yes. I, I think the cringiest well, episode is still The Child. Oh, yeah. Uh, I awful. can't stand Code of Honor. That makes me cringe. What's the child? But yeah, there's quite a few cringy ones. Is that uh, the one that's that's the one where Deanna, Deanna, Deanna gets Troy space pregnant. Gets pregnant. Oh, uh, yeah. And they try and convince yeah. her to have an abortion. Yeah. Yeah. But she won't. Yeah. And she has the son. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So after two very strong episodes, we've now got two mm, not so strong episodes. But we'll have fun yeah. with them. We'll have fun we'll with survive. them. We'll survive. That's part of the fun. Yeah. Well, Subro and then we have Lower Decks, which is a cracker. Oh, and then but, uh, I mean, Subrosa is very memeable, you know, I mean, it's 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 memorable for all the wrong reasons, but it's memorable. I mean, uh, Gates was at a fest, or not a festival, like a con recently enough and, and was taking photos with a copy of the candle, you know, I mean. Oh, know. God, the candle. <laughs> I think she yeah, was selling so, candles at one point. Is the merch like was, her? So, some someone so someone Beverly's was selling them at the candle. con. Someone was selling them at the con, and I guess one made it over to Gates, and then you know she was doing her photo ops, and then half of it's like, "Do you want the candle in the photo?" So loads of people at the con got photos of Gates with the candle. With the... oh my god, it just and there's Sean's oh my, mm. oh my. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh Find your button. My. I had to find my button. <laughs> we had quite a few tonight, Sean. We did. Auntie was was horrid. <laughs> it was this. It was this shot here. Oh, I just no! said, like, oh The senior <laughs> staff were all waiting their turn. Ew. <laughs> Two admirals, one data. Yeah. It's just oh, the admiral's me. like, it's my turn now. He's getting impatient. Yeah. <laughs> Please stop. Gonna do, gonna do the look, seagull. Ka -ka! Look at the oh, eyes too. Yeah. He's looking up at him with the the innocent eyes. Yeah. Just no. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. Did he wrong? Nah. Wrong. Terrible. Terrible. Nah, That's android <laughs> eyes that had seen too much. <laughs> oh, dear. I was noticing yeah, earlier, Time Lord. What color are your eyes? Uh, hazel, and then I've got an orange stripe in one of them. Because you've got almost. Data color eyes. Ooh, They're very pale, Hazel. Very pale. Put Time Lord on, on big for a minute. We'll just, just check on. out his Android-like <laughs> eyes. 
Ah, they've got a little bit, little bit too much blue to be quite so Android-like. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a stripe. Yeah, I uh, see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, in your right eye. Okay, yeah, well, that's enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> there you I was go. just earlier. I was like, your eyes look almost, almost sort of like a greeny yellow. Yeah. But, yeah. Interesting. Uh, nice, Dupla Majram. Um, Majram, sleep Dupla. well, sir. Sleep well. Um. Chris this? says his favourite is the end of Q's trial for Picard. So that would be the, well, I guess that would be oh, that, yeah, not a TNG not, episode, right? That would be a Picard episode. Yeah. Well, I think maybe he's talking about the best of both worlds. Uh, or not the best uh, of both worlds. The, yeah. um, oh, gosh. Yeah, all good, all things. good things. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I know this maybe. name. <laughs> no, not that one. The other one. Yeah. Ah, look at a moopsie, so gate. I don't have my moopsie with me in Norway. It's very sad. <laughs> mm, there he is. Let's sad moopsie. Oh, oh, okay. Put him upside down so he looks sad. Ah, <laughs> oh, he couldn't possibly. Dorbs. There we go. That was kind of terrifying. <laughs> Sean, this is what I had going on in the background. I just kept adding people in. <laughs> Can't even see no. Gower on there. No, yeah, I even covered Gower on with Riker, so because it was getting too crowded. <laughs> oh, you you weren't here for the whole Christmas hat debacle. We had a Christmas. I had these duck oh, yeah. thing Christmas hats, and I was putting them on on characters playing in the background. It was a whole thing. Once I figure yeah. out how to do an animated background, you guys are going to see Moopsie just running through the background. Oh, I, um, it, it's actually quite easy, but you do need a OBS. OBS. I, I saw you said you had OBS, and that made me think of it. I use OBS all the time. I, I, I'm tracking. <laughs> um, yeah, you just you just upload a, a, a background. You like download a video from YouTube or whatever. And you, I, yeah, I don't have a green screen to use it right now. But the um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, he's saying the episode in, where in TNG where he shifts through time and is taken back to primeval Earth. Yeah, so that would be all good things. Yeah. The primeval, primeval the goo. Primeval <laughs> goo. Yeah. They're getting closer and closer. He says, and he says what's a whoopsie? It's not a whoopsie, it's a moopsie. It's a moopsie. It's the cute little white thingy from, is it, it's Lower Decks, right? Um, it's Lower and it Decks. it eats your bones. Yeah. Out of they go, they really go, cute. They oh, go I'm to one really of those funny. like zoo places, you know, that, um, you know, like and intergalactic goes, a menagerie, a menagerie, a menagerie yeah. type place, yeah, menagerie, yeah, very cute. Yeah. It's cute, but a bit devilishly evil, but cute anyway. It drinks your bones, <laughs> it drinks your bones, it kind of sucks your bones out. It's not, not a nice thing. But it's oh, cute. they're, they're, look they're, at they're um. But they're they're officially releasing a plush of this, almost a year after the episode came out, and after you know all the Chinese lads have sold a couple of hundred thousand of them. Um, so great job on the official merch. Yeah, um, CBS. The price isn't bad. It's, their, uh, yeah, investment. Yeah, they, the the price isn't bad, and it's pretty much identical to the one I have. Slight variations, but I'm just like, so oh well, you you wouldn't have them ready for the episode. Nope. I yeah. I wonder if there's like someone who, uh, if you guys were in Starfleet, would you would you be like date and have your your Moopsy uh, uh, sustenance number four, Mo Moopsy sustenance fifty seven. I wonder what Tar Moopsy's Hill. favorite Targbone. Yeah. Well, some people have sterilized um sterilized tribbles as pets. So that's the thing. In Picard, oh. they show the war tribbles that Section Thirty or the Daystrom mm. Institute has. You know. Yeah, well, if they can breed like normal tribbles, I mean, that's like like the film Alien, you'd soon take over a base or a planet with those things. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, Tavikins, you're going to kick yourself. What? We didn't give out the points for the dad jokes. <laughs> oh. Oops, never mind. Uh, I, can, I can run through them all just for everybody's fun. Oh, so cool, we man. have three from Mr. T. My wife asks why I didn't buy her flowers. To be honest, I didn't even know she sells flowers. Um, what has five toes and isn't your foot? My foot. And uh, what does Bruce Lee like to drink? What the? Uh, my, my offerings were, I used to be addicted to soap, but now I'm clean. And I ordered a chicken and egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. 
and uh, Tired Time Lord had. Uh, Sorry, where, I, ordered where a dessert... I, ordered... I ordered a chicken and an egg from oh, Amazon. Oh, I get it. Okay. I'll well, let you I'll... know yeah, okay. which comes first. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Tired Time Lord said, um, Where does a 10 foot Mugatu. M- 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 oh, I can't say it right. Sleep. Mugatu. Any- anywhere he wants to. <laughs> Uh, and why was Star Trek so successful? Because it had good genes. Yeah. Um, and and Stu Plum did the whole, uh, as Riker asked Bev when his dentist appointment was, tooth hurty. <laughs> My wife yeah. said to me the other day, are you even listening to me? I said, that's a funny way to start a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it. Yeah, love go. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice little rundown of the dad jokes. Yeah. Sorry you didn't get any points, but thanks for no. the effort. <laughs> it was appreciated. Uh, anyway. Now, like can we a... allocate them for next week? I feel like everyone came in and tried. Yeah, maybe you can, you, can, you can take the week to think about it and allocate them next week. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why are pirates um, called pirates? Because they are. Because they are. <laughs> That's from Chris. What's a, That's Chris's offering. What, what's a pirate's favorite letter? R. R. Uh, you think that, but it'd actually be the C. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting something like that. I was like, R is too simple. You all just fell for it. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I don't know. And my yeah. face was hurting from the jazz dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> they bring me yeah. so much joy. <laughs> what What's the difference between a piano, a tuna, and glue? What? You can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tuna. Oh dear! But it's <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> you can't piano a tuna. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, there, was a, there was an, there was another bit to that joke, but you didn't you didn't get, fall for it. I, I could because I a... said a tuna. Mm-hmm. Go on. We see. I, I said a tuna, a piano, and glue, right? And then I didn't address the glue part. Oh, but normally, someone yeah. someone will say, "What what about the glue?" And I go, "Ah, I had a feeling to get stuck on that, but uh, it didn't work." Because ah. then you picked up on it. Why was Riker so good at playing, playing hide and seek? Like. Because he always found a way to sit down in unexpected places. That works. Uh. I just read that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you get when you cross a Romulan with a garden? A sneaky salad. Mm. I like it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Dusty. <laughs> Pretty bad. Right. Well, I think that's probably all we got time for tonight. I think right? that's it. A but man walks into a pub. Next week a man comedy. walks into a pub with a house. The barman says, "Oh, with a horse." No. Yes. A man walks into a pub with a horse, not a house. The uh, barman says, "Why the long face?" Why the long face? Yeah. It's an old classic. It doesn't quite work with house does it does... <laughs> yeah you gotta just like check your typos <laughs> right well like thank you very much calling smiley or slimer thank you very much everyone for coming this evening and discussing um the pegasus um thank you to mazimut bob tired time lord uh Tavigans turner and chief sean for popping by and thank you to everyone in live chat world um not uh, including uh, Stuplum, Ruth, um, Chris, uh, who else? Uh, Mr. Tavikins, um, Smiler Rainbow, our wrench. And uh, I think that's about it wasn't it, this evening. I think that was about it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, everyone, for coming and making the show what it is. Join us next Wednesday at 8 o'clock for another episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. We shall see you then. Cheers. Doing the Vulcan, you know. Doing the Vulcan thing, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's a Vulcan salute. <laughs> There's a whole bunch Rhymesity. of different salutes going on there. <laughs> right, see you next week. <laughs>